Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Loaded Mag NUFC for um, our weekly third episode this week now. Yeah, number, number three. three. Number three. Tell you what, they're coming into a bit of a blur. They're they're uh, they're, they're, uh, they're coming thick and fast. But look, we are back. Uh, the loaded boys are back in town for another weekly dose of transfer talk, opinions, links, whatever you want to call it. We're going to cover it uh, tonight, and of course, it wouldn't be anything without the the main guys in the house. And we've got one or two returning as well. So we've got Daz in the house. How you doing, Daz? All good, Pete. Uh, three from three for me. <laughs> Is this going to be a really just, thing? Just note that. Four for we'll tally it. Uh, Mark, how you doing, fella? I'm all right, mate. Two from three. <laughs> yeah. How about you, uh, Chris? Here we go. <laughs> yeah. I think I think it's one from three. I could be wrong, but I think it's one from three this week. This week. I want a pay rise, so Pete. Pay rise for me. I'm not the one that makes the makes the rules. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> Is it me? No one yeah, really makes well, the rules. <laughs> fuck knows. <laughs> we just we just we just wake up and decide what we're doing on the day. That, that was exactly. the beauty of uh, non scripted loaded mag and UFC yeah. definitely. But um, good to be back. It is yeah. good to be back, and we're going to get into lots and lots of talk. But um, we've had to change tack slightly. We've um, we, we're giving Jordan the, the week off. He's on holidays, well earned holiday, should we say, with all of his work over the course of the season. Uh, but we have a very more than capable um, uh, journalist to step in, and you've seen him before on Loaded Mag and UFC. So pleasure to welcome in uh, the Shield Gazette's own uh, Dominic Skirl. Welcome back, Dom. Evening, lads. You all right? Evening, mate. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, Cheers. pleasure, Dom. Uh, great to have you back in um, and, and joining as boys to talk all things transfers. Um, and look, it, it's uh, it, it's going to be an interesting one. Lots and lots of talk, lots and lots of links. But something that's not necessarily transfer related to, actually, before we get into it, um, is the fixtures. Um, and we uh, we were delighted, I think, to see the fixtures come out for our new season. Um, and we have Nottingham Forest at home on the first game of the season. So, look, I want to get all your boys' opinions on on the fixtures, but in particular, in isolation, Dom, I'll start with you. Obviously, the news came out, Nottingham Forest at home, first game of the season. What are your initial thoughts about that um, and the fixtures in general? I'm excited about it. It's a, obviously a winnable game, which um, is great uh, to to start the season. St James's Park will be rocking. Nottingham Forest, their fans will be up for it. It's the first Premier League game in 23 years, so I think it's an ideal game in in many ways. A potential banana skin, of course, and obviously if Newcastle weren't to win it, you've just got to manage um, the reaction there because results don't always go your way. But I think on paper that's that's as good a start as we could have expected home game against the team who won the playoffs which in theory on paper should be uh, the easiest game you play but but it's important Newcastle obviously get off to a winning start um because last season they had a very comfortable start of the season in terms of the fixtures but took them 14 games to get a win so hopefully it comes a lot sooner this time around definitely look from a personal point of view I was buzzing to see Forrest um, early doors, uh, very local to me, although it's at home. Uh, fingers crossed I can get a ticket and be there for the first game of the season. But um, yeah, gr- great to see. Um, boys, uh, look, Daz, I'll work it round. I'll start with yourself. Um, is there any any of those fixtures out there? And I'll just pop it up on the screen. Hopefully we can see it. A little bit small on there, but is there any fixtures that you saw that really stood out to you over the course of the season? Okay, well, first of all, a great set of fixtures. I uh, love them. Uh, but yeah, most importantly, we're in the Premier League to actually fulfill them. Um, mm. Anyone that stood out for me, the one, uh, the Nuts Forest one, I, yeah, I immediately thought, yeah, that could, that could be home win. It, you know, on paper it should be. And I'm thinking now that I might try and get over for that game. So we'll see how that plays out. But uh, then the, the second thing I noticed was 
uh, and I, my, I, I normally, and I did it last year as well, normally look towards May, and you know, you're kind of worried, wh wh where are we going to be? Are we going to be fighting that relegation battle? That's the normal. That was the old Newcastle. We don't have to worry about that anymore. We don't have to worry about who we're playing the last few games of the season. So that, that, that I don't, uh, that's, that's refreshing. And the next thing I noted, Pete, I thought of you. This is my third thought. I said, oh, uh, Newcastle are playing Leicester on the 26th. That's uh, as, as in Leicester. That would suit Pete, wouldn't it? So that's that was my third thought when I look at the fixtures. So that's the ones that stood out for me. You, you're not wrong. Uh, I looked at those uh, Boxing Day fixtures. And I thought finally I could get to a Boxing Day <laughs> fixture. Get in because normally you know unless you're driving, trains and stuff are just at a standstill. I'd plan to go to the um, the Man United game at home this season. The season just gone. And there was just no form of transport to get up there, but uh, hopefully get the the short walk um, down to the the King Power. But look, Mark, any fixtures stand out for you over the course of the season? Having looked at the uh, the fixtures, uh, hopefully looking forward to getting over for a couple um, early season and maybe late season. I think obviously with things opened up, open might even try and get a hopefully get across with Daz even maybe and get a game at the back end somewhere and catch up with everybody. Um, I think Paul Oxley just put one in the chat. The one that really stands out for me is uh, Leeds at home New Year's Eve. Mm. Is a great game. So that has the potential to either be very good or be completely violent and carnage. So let's just see what happens with a good day of drinking and then New Year's Eve to follow. But yeah, look, it's a good start. Forest at home, I think you couldn't you couldn't have asked for much more um, with that. Um, be interesting to see if uh, Jack Colback come back, co comes back to St. James's. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll it'll be good. I think. Look, City and Liverpool in the in the first few games, but let's hope that Haaland's taken all of his vengeance out on West Ham first game of the season, and he's uh, he's worn himself out uh, by the time he gets to us. But no decent fixtures. Look, there's points there to be won. But as Dom said, you you never know. But I I think under Eddie Howe, I don't think we'll have the same start as we did with Steve Bruce. I think they'll be well well set, and hopefully some. Some new players in with time adjusted. So yeah, no, look, roll the roll the season on. Um, looking forward to it, lads. Definitely, Chris. Any any fixtures um, sort of stand out for you uh, over, over the course of the season? Martin's just mentioned um, Forest and Jack Colback. Potentially, Brennan Johnson might be getting used to seeing his uh, his future home uh, early on in the season <laughs> by coming to uh, St James's Park. But uh, is, are there any that stand out for you? Uh, I mean. Uh... Like everyone, you know, I, I noticed the first game of the season straight away, and for me, like, I, I, you know, I take, I take what Dom said absolutely. You know, you, you, you got a newly promoted side at home, you think great, but for me, I, I always think the opposite way on. Like, I always like to see one of the top six away, like I is the first game, because I always feel like the first game there's always a shock, there's always a potential to kind of you know kick your season on, and equally. You know, if you get beat, say we had Tottenham away and we got beat, no one expects anything. So you just kind of go, OK, you know, let's let's kick on for the rest of the season. So it will be nice because we'll be going into that game as favourites. And, you know, that's great. And if we get off to a great start, fantastic. Um, I always look around December because uh, my birthday's in December. But unfortunately, the, the World Cup ruins that this year. Um, so there'll be no, uh, no Premier League football for me near my birthday. Um, but do you know what I did notice about the fixtures um, this time around? And I don't know whether you all agree, but... They feel yeah. very well spaced out, as in, you know, the only month I'd say where there's a potential, you know, difficulty, I would say, is probably October. But all the other months, I feel like, you know, there's winnable games within each month, which is nice. Because I know when we looked at last season's fixtures, there was a there was a couple of hell months, wasn't there, where we were like, oh, my God. I mean, the Christmas and New Year periods was absolutely horrible, wasn't it? Um, but Martin's absolutely right. You know, it, it, this season is a brand new season, uh, renewed optimism. And even if we had difficult months, to be fair, I think, you know, we'd all f go into them feeling pretty confident under Eddie Howe and um, this new reformed Newcastle side. Definitely. Uh, the, the, well, the one thing that stood out for me with these fixtures, uh, guys in the guys and girls in the chat, you boys on the panel, it, 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 tell me different if you disagree. I looked at those first three months, August, September, and October, and thought they are very, very nicely spaced out, favourable fixtures for us. We've got some tough teams in there, but we've got some winnable fixtures in between them. And I thought that is a great way to start the season with some of these fixtures. And if we start well, it could be a really, really positive run up until we break for the World Cup. Um, there's a little section in there um, in February 
We've got three home games, uh, West Ham, Liverpool and Brighton. Uh, but we've got mm -hmm. Bournemouth away in that time. I think that's a nice clutch of fixtures uh, in the midway point of the season or just beyond the midway point. Um, and April is not too bad as well. We've got a few away games, but, you know, Brentford, Villa, Everton, Southampton at home. Um, you know, I, I think everyone would agree that that May is a difficult one. Um, but look, we're, we're not looking at this point in time to be uh, come May in a relegation battle or even being considered in one. So it'll be a case of where we're at at that point and can we push on and have a solid end. So really, really good to see a, a nice set of fixtures as as, as a number of you have already said, spaced out over the season. Um, before we move on to transfers, um, uh, Lee will be joining us at some point, um, very, very shortly, actually. Um, so for Dom and Lee in particular, get your questions in, anything you want to ask them about all things Newcastle, all things transfer related, we will have um, a, sort of a question section as the show um, goes on. However... What I wanted to start with, and it might not be the, the most talked about point of view um, that we're starting with, but I wanted to start with goalkeepers tonight. I wanted to talk about goalkeepers. Now, um, you know, we, we we were heavily linked really early on with Dean Henderson. Um, um, sorry, I'm whoever's on pictures, I'm, I'm still in their thunder, so I apologise. Um, I just saw his picture on there. But um, we, we, were, we were linked with Dean Henderson, um, early on and it looked almost like it was a sure thing but it's very very clear from from the news today that he's on his way to nottingham forest but what's been really really interesting um since that is that we've been linked with two other goalkeepers um in um alfonso Ariola and um and nick pope now look dom i'll come to you first um a couple of questions, really, just off the top of my head. You know, what is the situation with the goalkeeper? Is it a, is it a position that Eddie Howe is really looking for, in your opinion? And um, where are we at with, with the goalkeeper search? Are these two links in Pope and Ariola that seem genuine? I think both seem genuine. Newcastle do want a, a goalkeeper. It's not the top, top priority, I'd say a striker is probably that, but a goalkeeper to compete, challenge with Martin Dubravka, who's just sort of been, when fit, the surefire starter for Newcastle for the past few years. So, um, in regard to Dean Henderson, reports from the North West saying that deal was 99% done at the start mm -hmm. of the month. As soon as that story came out, checked it out, sources at Newcastle just said, that is absolutely not true. And turns out that that looks... To be right on the money and um, potentially Notts Forest could be his destination. Not sure. Um, Nick Pope, obviously 30 years old now, wants to be in the World Cup um, squad for England. And his best way to do that is by playing Premier League football. Will he get that at Newcastle over Dubravka? I'm not entirely sure, but he's certainly got a better chance than if he's playing in the Championship with Burnley. What I'd argue with Nick Pope is, I think Newcastle will will look at him, but is he a big enough upgrade on Dubravka? Or is he even an upgrade at all on Dubravka? Because I'd argue he's not. The times I've seen him play, not as good with his feet. And Dubravka is not good with his feet anyway. And that's sort of what Eddie Howe's wanting in a goalkeeper. Someone who can play the ball out from the back and, and start attacks from there. And I don't think Nick Pope um, quite fits that bill. Um, Ariola. Another name that has been mentioned, obviously West Ham, um, heavily linked with him, was on loan there last season. Um, again, that's a, that's a player Newcastle could potentially look at, but these deals, if they do happen, are very much in the early, early stages. Nothing nothing concrete as of yet. Okay. No. Damn, uh yeah. Go on, go Just a, a quick question, um, linked to goalkeepers, because we'll go an hour into it. We, we won't be talking about goalkeepers, I forget it. But uh, and, and it comes from Adam. Is there any any talk of Sam Johnson? Not That's that I've heard of. Um, obviously, he sort of falls into this Nick Pope category, where he's on England's radar. He's been playing in the, playing in the Championship, and um, so not that I've heard of. But I wouldn't be surprised if it like. We saw some stories about him because he's is in that bracket of the type yeah. of players Newcastle would be after, but I haven't heard anything. Um, thinking about 
obviously the, the goalkeeper situation and, and Dom has made made a really good point. Um you know, is Nick Pope an upgrade on, on Dubravka? I want to get your thoughts, boys, on, on this situation because you know I'm not quite sure whether whether he is an upgrade, but I think it it it, it depends on people's opinions on on how they feel about Nick Pope. But what are your boys, Chris? I'll come to you first. I'll work the other way around. You know, in 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 your opinion, do you think that Nick Pope um, is as good as Dubravka, or do you think he's better? I I completely agree with Dom. I think there's there's questions as to whether or not he is better. I I think I suppose what I'd be looking at, and maybe that's not what you know Eddie Howe or the owners are looking at. The question for me, I suppose, is is Nick Pope better than Carl Darlow? And he absolutely is. Yeah. Um, so he would improve the squad numbers, but would he necessarily challenge Dubravka? Like, if Nick Pope came in, would we look at Dubravka and Pope and think oh, we've got to start Pope? I'm not so sure. Um, one name, and I'm amazed that we started talking about him. Um, as soon as we got linked with Ariola, like I, I'd take him all day long. I, I think he was incredibly unlucky to end up at West Ham as an understudy to Fabianski. Now, I'm not taking anything away from Fabianski, but I, I think Ariola is is a is a top draw keeper. I mean, you you know you don't end up at PSG by accident. And I know he's been linked with other big clubs as well. And unfortunately, which is maybe that maybe the life of a goalie. Um, it's very easy to all of a sudden be out of favour with a manager or whatever, and you, you you become a bit of a bench warmer, and then you lose, you know, the, that impetus or that um, that that reputation. If you like, everyone just assumes, oh, he's just a number two. He's just a good number two. I think he's better than just a good number two myself. I I think I think he would make a difference. I'd be very very happy if we got uh, Alfonso Ariola, but yeah. To answer your question, Pete, I think Nick Pope improves the squad. Does he necessarily improve the number one position? Yeah, there is there is question marks around that. As Dom said, I, I don't think he's particularly good with his feet. He's more he's a, he's a very good shot stopper. I wouldn't take that away from him. And you know he's he's um, over the years he's done fantastically well to keep Burnley in the Premier League. But I think for the way that we want to play now going forward, Eddie Howe will probably be wanting a goalkeeper who is very comfortable on the ball and probably looking at distribution as well. I, I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm not the uh, the biggest advocate for for Nick Pope, and I, I can't say I watch him week in week out. But again, I don't think he, from what I've seen, I don't think his distribution is all that great either. So not great distribution, not great at his feet. I, I question whether it would be worth going for him. And I bet you as well, he'd probably be a good 15, 20 million. So could we spend that better elsewhere would be my question. Yeah, very, very interesting. Mark, I'll come to you. Um, I mean, the links with Nick Pope came out quite um quite early uh, today and I think it was Keith Downey that initially uh, threw them out there. He just arrived back on holiday and already throwing in transfer news straight off the bat. But um, but obviously since then there's been talks of like 40 million for for Nick Pope. I mean, you know, that's the reason why we walked away. Yeah, there's been links about a potential 40 million that, that Bernie are quoting. Now, you know, it, He's only got one year left on his contract, if I'm right in thinking. Now, yeah. it, it, clearly, that is uh, that's someone that's overpriced. But I want to know, you know, from your perspective, you know, is is Nick Pope the type of goalkeeper that you would want to come into Newcastle? Um, I, I, well, I think there's a couple of things. First and foremost, I think need to give a little bit of credit to Paul Oxley because if you go back over a couple of the loaded mag shows a few weeks back. One of the comments he threw up in the chat was about Nick Pope, and he mentioned about the goalkeeper, and he threw up a stat there. Um, I'm not sure if we can find it, but only two goalkeepers have kept more clean sheets since 2019 than Nick Pope. So he is a very good shot stopper. What I would question play-wise is he's not great at distribution and playing out from the back. I don't think he's that kind of keeper, so I would wonder <clears throat> what is Eddie Howe really looking for from a keeper at the back, because to be fair, Dubravka's not that good at playing out from the back either. Yeah. And his distribution can be poor as well at times. So to me, I wouldn't say he's an upgrade. I would say they're actually quite similar in a way. Um, is he the kind of goalkeeper I would have? Yeah, ahead of Darlow, yes. Is he the kind of keeper you would want if you were going to play a couple of teams, i.e. as in a league team and a cup team and rotate? Absolutely. The second piece to that is 
would you pay 40 million? No, that's ridiculous. <clears throat> but would you get him for 10 with a year left on his contract with Burnley having to furnish 60 million in debt? Absolutely you would. So I think if you could press the right buttons and you could get him for 10, then I'd snap Burnley's hand off. And I think at somewhere between 10 to 15, I think you would get a deal from Burnley because he's got a year left, 30 years old, wants to be playing, and Burnley are up to their neck in debt. So I think that's a deal that can be done. So I think, again, if you look at it for the right reasons as opposed to his age and can he stop a shot, yes, great shot stopper. But I think the deal has to be at the right price. And I think I think he jumped at the chance to come to the Northeast and continue his career. Um, again, for me, I think if you're playing two teams and, and the club really want to go after a cup, he'd be like a lot of teams do. You, you look at City, you look at Liverpool, they rotate the keepers around. Why could we not do the same? I think you made a great point, Mark. And I think not just on rotation, but on the price of the deal. I think you mentioned about 12, 13 million potentially in getting that deal done. Daz, I'm going to come to you with with, with another alternative potentially um, in that we're taking <clears throat> Burns' number one goalkeeper away potentially and bringing him to Newcastle. Could we pass them Carl Darlow as a sweetener, as part of that deal, knowing that they're going into the championship, you know, could that be a potential deal and would that work for all parties? So I want to know, firstly, your opinion on Nick Pope, because um, there's lots of opinions on the chat, loads of people shouting out, lots and lots of good goalkeepers. Um, I think there's once in there who I talked about in January as a really good goalkeeper. Um, but I want to hear your opinions on Pope yeah. and also that potential because it's not really been talked about. And I was thinking about it earlier. I was thinking, Carl Darlow would be a good option. Yeah, I, 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 hear, I heard that on, on some, I was listening to something today, um, some YouTube show somewhere, and uh, heard that option of, of um, or as I read it somewhere, um, of um, swapping Darlow as part of the deal. Uh, I also read, heard something, or read something about uh, like 10 million being the, the price. That 10 million is fine, but 40 million, get, get away. What are you having a laugh? Um, then I also want to say in the chat there's plenty of plenty of uh, people having having uh, puns on uh, Ariola and just want to nip that in the bud straight away. Not having that. And uh, but uh, yeah, then on, on uh, Nick Pope, uh, yeah, no, I think he's a decent keeper. Um, I, I we did talk about him a couple of weeks ago, uh, probably not probably before fully loaded transfer show. And uh, the what turned me off from then was he's thirty, uh, and, and then. Dubrovka is thirty three, so he is a bit. Uh, he's he's a few more years. I know keepers play on if they're longer, but we can get a few years. Uh, out of him. I would hope that we would bring in someone younger though. And another name that no one has mentioned actually was um the fine art keeper Justin Bilo or something like that. I, I remember just googling him as well. I don't know much about him, but I just he was in the mix as well. Um, but uh, does that answer all your questions, Pete? Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> I, I think I think this is going to be a moving part um, because you know it, it's it's a position that a lot of people at the end of the season weren't really thinking that it was a it, it was something that that a position that needed to be filled. But actually, you know, as the summer's gone on, there are more and more people thinking about it, its importance. I mean, I'll come back to you, Dom, with this. Do you, do you think do do you think you know it, from Eddie Howe's point of view? He he's desperate to 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 bring in a goalkeeper um, to kind of replace the Bravka, or is it more of what um, Martin said in terms of maybe a rotation um, situation? Yeah, I think it's more what um, Martin said. Obviously, if you can get a, a long term sort of replacement for Dubravka, like like we say, he's thirty three now. He's not going to be around forever, and obviously, you want to improve the sort of distribution side of your game. So, I think bringing in someone who can compete directly with Dubravka, just put him under a bit of pressure because, like I said before, he's been just a guaranteed starter when fit for, for so long at Newcastle now. And it's it's an awkward position, goalkeeper, because once you're out the side, you can stay out the side uh, like like um, Chris touched on before. So it's, it's going to be an interesting one because, like, Nick Pope would be a great number two, for example, but he'll want to start every week. The Bravka will want to start every week. So do you go young and get someone who is a long-term replacement um, for the Bravka who will be happy potentially starting the cup games, maybe starting 
five, ten games a season, if that, um, then potentially, yeah. But I don't think it's a huge priority for Eddie Howe to just completely replace the Bravka this transfer window. No, no, I think that's a, that, that's a fair point. Now, I just wanted to touch on whilst we're talking about goalkeepers. Um, Freddie Woodman, uh, Miles Starforth uh, of the Shields Gazette, put on that he's facing a summer um, decisions on his future. Um, what do you know with regards to the situation, Dom, with regards to, obviously, Freddie Woodman? He has been linked with with Preston. Um, I don't think anybody knows whether it's looking like it's going to be a permanent deal or, an, or another loan. What do you know about his situation and do you think it's time for him to move on? Yeah, he. I expect him to be on his way out of Newcastle, either on loan or permanently this summer. Preston, obviously, the front runners, they're keen to get a deal done, really pushing for it. He's got one year left on his contract. So, like you say, the makeup of the deal, we're not entirely sure because if you loan him, for a season, then he's a free agent next summer. Do you get some sort of framework in place where Newcastle can actually get a bit of money from Preston um, to to get a deal done? Um, so we'll see see what happens there. But I fully expect uh, Freddie Woodman to leave uh, Newcastle this summer. And if I'm a better man, I'd, I'd say Preston will be the club he goes to. Definitely, and look, it's a for me. I don't know what you boys think as well, the loaded boys. I think it's a crying shame that, you know, the, the situation that Freddie Woodman came in. He was the under 20s, I think they won the under 20s World Cup, playing, representing England and looked like he was the future of English football. And he just, just I think he, he, he is the perfect example of what the old regime has done in terms of ruining players. Uh, because his career is just kind of nosedived off the back of that. Mm. Such a shame that he hasn't hit his potential. But maybe this move to Preston or, or whoever he eventually moves to um, can be the catalyst to kind of improve his career. Um, well, you know, fingers crossed. Um, but look, um, I, I, th I think, you know, goalkeeper situation is going to be fluid. Uh, we, we, we've talked a little bit about Ariola. Uh, we'll come back to that because there's an interesting, funny little um, uh, situation that I want to bring up uh, um, when when Lee joins us eventually. But um, uh, we, we have uh, Lee. He's lay, he's lay there. Strakosha, by the way, just on the on the keeper's pitch, Strakosha still hasn't been picked up either. That deal to Fulham didn't happen. Oh, so Strakosha okay. hasn't. Uh, there's been nothing come of that. So he's still 27 years old. Live Lazio, good keeper, still out there. Okay, lots and lots of goalkeepers to Just talk to throw about. another name in the hat. Yeah, <laughs> too right. And look, we're going to keep hold of everything um, and lots and lots more to discuss. But look, let's bring Leon. Uh, just arrived bring in, the chef. in the green room. <laughs> the chef. Mm. All right, Lee. Hi, Lee. How you doing? Hey. Yeah. Good, good, good. How are you That's feeling? Good. Good. How, how are you good. feeling? More's the point. Yeah, feeling better. Literally, just started feeling better the last twenty four hours. It's been a it's been a pretty rough week, but yeah, we're 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 back in the game. I'm starting to feel a little bit like myself again. Nice to see you all. Hi guys. Good to see you, well, man. Yeah, and obviously, yeah, it, Lee, you've not met Don before. Don, you've not met Lee. Um, yeah, the the two journalists in the house tonight. So, a how pleasure you doing, Don? I'm not bad, thanks. How are you? Mm. Yeah, pleasure to better to now. Have you. Better now. <laughs> Yeah, God, yeah, you you were a mess last week. Uh, I don't know how yeah. you got through the show. To be fair, got through it. You have fair to. Play to, definitely. <laughs> but um, we, you know, actually, why not talk about this? But just before we move on, so we, we were talking about goalkeeper situations, and we talked about Nick Pope because he's been heavily linked with Newcastle. We tentatively talked about Ariola. Now, I know you know. Obviously, you will know Ariola quite well from French football, from PSG's point of view. You know. Um, I've got to say, and there, there, there's been a bit of a situation today, and I've, I've just uploaded one or two um, pics uh, on the, on the, on the, the slides, and uh, there's been a bit of a situation today with Ariola in the last 24 hours. In uh, before I get your opinion on him, is that there's been a West Ham meltdown. There's been a meltdown. <laughs> All across West Ham United fan base, the fact that we are linked with potentially taking Ariola away from them, even though he wasn't first choice goalkeeper for them last season, that we're now apparently 
copying them. Now we're doing an Aston Villa following their scouting network. And um, Dan Lawless, um, West Ham Fans TV, friend of the channel, been on away days with us, um, isn't too happy about the fact that we're looking at potentially stealing Ariola in this. There's panic stations all over the shop at the moment. But from your perspective, Lee, Alfonso Ariola, you know, is he the type of goalkeeper that Newcastle should be looking for? Um, or, and, and I was shocked to, to, to hear that, that he's still contracted to PSG. What, 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 what's the deal with, with Alfonso Ariola? <laughs> I can't believe he's still there either. Um, he's been on loan for what the last three or four seasons. Um, yeah, it was a really weird one. He um, was obviously came in. Uh, um, he was part of the youth system at Paris Saint Germain, and um, he was given a shot. He was given a shot um, at uh, being the number one, but he failed. He failed his audition, and um, the fans didn't take very kindly to it. Felt that the club, even though he was one of the youth product. Felt that the club could go higher, aim higher, get a better quality goalkeeper in. Um, there were those that were close to the club that really kind of felt a little bit, uh, a bit, a little bit sorry for him, just purely because you know, if there's a you know any club that wants to see their youngsters do well, it's PSG because very few of them ever come through um, and you forge your career. You know, the one that comes to mind really is the president of Kimpembe. So we're in a situation here where you know it didn't go well, and he was sent off on loan. And uh, he's had a year at Fulham, he's been to West Ham, um, he, I think he had a year in Villarreal as well. So he's, he's been literally all over Europe um, and he's still somehow contracted to PSG. So <laughs> he, um, my understanding he's got a year left on his contract. Now, now would be the time to, uh, for, him, for him to go and I think that's what PSG would need to do with, be, to, be to offload him this summer. It makes total sense. But look. You, I mean, you made the point that West Ham fans are going into meltdown. They've had more than enough time to tie this up. You know, he's had a year there last season. It was understudy, really, to to. Uh, I think he made some like eighteen appearances, but it was it was un understudy to Lucas Fabianski. So I don't know. Maybe that's the way in which they view him as an understudy now, knowing Alfonso Ariola and how close he is to the French national squad. He's in a position where he doesn't want to be seen as an understudy. He wants to be a number one, like he was when he was on loan at Fulham, for example. So, you know, if he wants to move to Newcastle United, then I'm sure he would want to be a number one. It's, 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 it's as simple as that. Um, but as I've said to you off off camera, I think that yesterday we, we spoke briefly, Pete, over text, and I said to you, you know, and I pose a question, is he better than what Newcastle already have? He's, okay, some people don't like the word shot stopper, but he, he is good. There's a good, strong part of his game. But he's is very erratic, very, very erratic. At the most random times you will see something where you're just literally scratching your head and saying, what are you doing, you know? And and I think this is why he didn't, he wasn't able to forge a career at PSG and why PSG had to look elsewhere for a goalkeeper. Um, is he a good keep goalkeeper? Yes, he is. He's a good goalkeeper. But, you know, you you've got to brace yourself for some of those wild moments because he has them in his locker. That's not the kind of news that we wanted to hear about <laughs> Alfonso Ariola. And, and, and having those erratic moments um, is not a great thing as well. I remember um, last season, I think against Man City, there was a couple of moments where Dubravka had some erratic moments and the fans went absolutely mad at St. James's Park and saying, you know, he's rubbish with the ball, this, that and the other. That's one of the things I wanted to ask you really quickly before we do move on is, is, uh, is Alfonso Ariola good with the ball at his feet? Is, it, is his distribution okay? Uh, because it, it seems like that's what Eddie Howe is looking for in his next goalkeeper. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, he, he's competent. He's competent. I'm not going to tell you he's, you know, he, he's, he's fantastic or, again, better than, you know, any other goalkeeper in the Premier League with his feet. He's competent. He's... You know, I have to say he's, he's he's a good goalkeeper, but that's it. Wow. That's it. You know, he's competent in 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 a, in a variety of areas with erratic moments. Um, can PSG, sorry, can Newcastle find a goalkeeper better? Yes. Um, I mean, you you mentioned Nick Pope, but you know, Nick Pope is an England international um, who Burnley will want to recoup some serious money for. 
And, you know, there'll probably be a slap a little bit of Newcastle tax on that and you're going to be paying a lot of money for him. Um, my understanding is that Alfonso Ariola can be purchased for somewhere between 10 and 13 million. I, I, again, I, I may have got those figures slightly wrong, but um, I have heard something within those regions, um, which would, wouldn't be the worst price. He's 29 years old, so he's still got plenty of years ahead of him. Um, he's, look, he's, he's a French, he's, you know, he's, he's on the fringes of the French squad. Um, so yes, it, it depends if Newcastle are looking to bring someone in quickly. Um, if Newcastle are quite happy with what they've got and, you know, feel they can sit on Dubravka and, oh, um, Darlow, sorry, Darlow, that's it, his name has escaped me, and Darlow and feel they can maybe sit on him for another year whilst they, you know, do a little bit more scouting and, and, and go out there and find somebody to, you know, that, that would seem deemed suitable to take over that number one spot, then that wouldn't be the worst option either. Okay, just just a really quick one, just before we move on. Lots of people in the chat have mentioned this particular goalkeeper, and I've just seen it pop up again. So I'm just going to click on it. That's one. a good call. Yeah, from, it is. From, That's uh, a really good call. Non Atlantic. Um, what what are your thoughts on Lafon as a goalkeeper? Do you rate him? Do you think he's someone that could be successful in the Premier League, or do you think you know he's not something that we should be looking for at the moment? One hundred percent. Newcastle should be looking at Albon Lafon. Now, this guy is a top, top quality goalkeeper. Um, and he's got all the attributes to be the French number one going forward. You've got Hugo Lloris, who's, you know, in his mid-30s now. Um, and this is a guy that oh, should really be taking over for the foreseeable future. Uh, may not happen as of yet, but, you know, you know, France have got a deep pool of quality in every position. So, uh, but this is a guy who is only going to get better and better and better. He's he, he's non he's not captain. He's, um, he's an absolute rock for them is you know always seems to have a great game against Paris Saint-Germain for some reason you know he's you know you, you have a look at his, some of his highlights he's, he's made, made some fantastic saves but again great you know if, if I'm saying to you if I'm saying Newcastle go out and find a, a goalkeeper a French goalkeeper he'd probably be the one that I would put certainly spurned put to the top of the list he is the best up-and-coming goalkeeper in French football at the moment and believe me French football has some of the best goalkeepers in Europe they're certainly the best up-and-coming ones there's some fantastic young keepers he's at the top of all of them so definitely you know if if Newcastle were interested in a goalkeeper and as I said earlier you know rather than kind of rush rather than rush for Areola Take your time and get in the font. <laughs> Take your time, right? And and go check him out, you know, and, you know, do the scouting, do what you need to do, do your research on him. You know, even if it was a year's time and, and you know, you come back in for him and he wants to spend the, a year at Nantes and, 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 and kind of build there. And they've just won the Coupe de France. So they'll, they'll be playing in Europe next season, which is huge for, for a club like Nantes. Um, so maybe, you know, maybe he wants to stay there and see, you know, do he have a European, which will be his first European campaign. Um, but look, he's, he's, a, he's a tremendous goalkeeper, definitely the best in France, um, best young French goalkeeper. So he's one that, that Newcastle would uh, would certainly want to keep an eye on. I know, I know it's hard to say, Lee, but if, you know, if, if, if I was to say to you, you know, or the owners were going to approach you and go, Lee, we're after La France. How much money do you think we're talking in terms of uh, tempting not to, you know, release them? What would you say? Well, Chris, if you to, if you told me if you told me that um, if you asked me that question six months ago, I would have probably said that Nant would probably have held out for for thirty five odd million quid. But obviously, um, that would have been on the back of the uh, the television collapse. Um, the television deal collapse in France, where a lot of the clubs were really in a in a, in a financial mess. Um, so they've been really helped out by by a loan. That's again, I won't go into it because it's quite long, um, a long process to explain. But they've been they've been basically rescued a lot of the French clubs, and um, now there's a lot more stability amongst those those twenty league going clubs because of it. So I think again. There's a, there's, a, there's a pocket of French clubs that will ask stupid amounts of money. Lille being one of them, as we're finding out for, for, for Sven Botman and, and some of the other players, they will really hold out. Lyon are another team that, that, that will hold out for big, big fees. Um, Nantes are not one of those. Nantes will, will sell at fair price. And I can't see Lafont moving within Ligue 1. Certainly not. But to England, I think there would be a definite, definite um, 
possibility of that happening, I think Newcastle could get in for 20 million, 20 to 25 million. I really do. I really do. Um, which I think would be a, a, a real super price for him. That would be an absolute snip because, uh, as I said, he's only going to get better. And he's, he's a young keeper. He's a leader. He's a captain. So he's got he's got everything in his locker. Um, Eddie Howe is listening tonight uh, on the show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, again. Uh, Save yourself to, 15 million, Eddie Howe, yeah. and the, from the Pope. Yeah, evening to Eddie Howe and, and Jason Tindall that are watching the show tonight. Um, you've just heard a future goalkeeper that we should be looking at. And look, yeah. Dom, you, you should be on the you should be on the on the call to tomorrow saying we need to make a trip to Nantes to have a look at <laughs> have a look at this guy next season to get keep a close eye on him for this year's Gazette. But um yeah um again a lot a lot of a lot of Newcastle fans in the chat really kind of pushed on him uh, and mentioned him a lot so it was, it was good to mention that. But um look um next up the curious case of Sven Botman. Um, <laughs> Here we go. Uh, yeah, uh, Chris's reaction is how we all feel about <laughs> this situation with Sven Botman. Now, you know, the last time we were talking uh, on 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 the fully loaded transfer show, it looked like it was close to being a done deal. It was even being said that. It was, you know, we were at the front of the queue. It was only a matter of time before he was going to do his medical, finish his under-21s. It was honestly, I genuinely felt like we would be on this show tonight talking about the fact that yeah. Sven Botman yeah. had been, had have signed for Newcastle United. That clearly hasn't happened. And it's turned into an absolute royal mess in terms of what this situation is. Nobody really knows, um, as far as I'm aware, of what this situation is. Um, but we're in a position where we're waiting, apparently, on um, uh, Newcastle to agree a fee, even though we felt like an agree, a, a fee was already agreed. We're waiting, apparently, to hear what the deal is with, with, with Sven Botman and, and Lille. And we've got Milan journalists that are telling us the complete opposite of what we're hearing from English journalists. Dom, what, what, what has it been like to report on this from Botman situation for you, um, obviously reporting on Newcastle? Uh, it, has it been madness? Um, have you been able to kind of get any sort of sense of what's been going on with this Sven Botman situation? But more importantly, what do you think is going to happen with this situation with Sven Botman? Yeah, it's been exhausting, really. Even in January, it was exhausting. I feel like I've wrote Ben Botman's name just thousands of times, and he's still not a Newcastle player. So, like you say, you're spot on with what you say. I think the situation is the negotiating that fee with Lille. Lille have moved the goalposts, whatever. I won't bore people with the with the details because I think we'll know them by now. But with Ben Botman, it's... Um, the one thing I would say, the narrative that he doesn't want to come to Newcastle certainly isn't true. He he wanted to come to Newcastle when they're sitting 19th in the Premier League table in January when Lille are still in the Champions League. So, OK, AC Milan is a factor, big club, Serie A champions in the Champions League, they can offer that straight away. But if Newcastle come and give him um, Sven Botman an offer, personal terms will not be an issue. It's a green that fee with Lille that's that's the issue and um, I think one of the best young defenders in Europe Newcastle certainly um, have him as a top priority it's just about those words getting that deal over the line but not a lot of movement in the past week and we'll just see where we'll go from here it's it's up in the air at the moment definitely um, it, it, it's a mad mad situation at, at this point in time um, Mark I'm going to come to you um, there's been a lot of talk. <laughs> I don't, I don't, don't give me a hard one now. Come on now. No, no. There's been a lot of talk uh, on social media, and look, I've I've met, I've put my points out there on social media about yeah. this Sven Botman situation. There's been a lot of talk um, from fans to say, you know what, you know, it, it, we don't know whether he even wants to come to us. We've got Milan journalists saying that he wants to go to them, and that he's been convinced on that by Maldini. Um, and that he's the one that's holding up the deal. Uh, we don't know what's going on with Lille. You know what? Give them an ultimatum. And if they're not interested, 
sack him off and let's go and find somebody else. Are you of that mindset or do you think slightly differently in terms of let's wait it out, let's see, because he's a quality player? What are your thoughts? I think if you... Look, the, the, you know, it appears to be with Lille that they move the goalposts. You know, we, we've seen that a bit in January. And I think if you were to ask Dom and Lee, you know, the Newcastle tax, as it's being called, is a, is a realistic thing, unfortunately, with some clubs. I, I put out a comment on Twitter the other night and I said, if this is a kid who becomes Newcastle's Vincent Company for the next 10 seasons or 10 years or 15 years, I think you pay the money for him. If it was 30 million or it's 36 million, if I look at Botman as a player compared to a Van Dyke of his age, 80 million paid by Man United for Harry Maguire, is he a player that you want to, to create that spine of the uh, of the Newcastle team that we've spoken about on so many shows? Then for me, you go and you and you pay the money and you get him. Is Ashworth the kind of fella that is going to hang around? I think he probably will barter a harder deal and push Leal to the extreme. But I, I firmly believe that in the club's eyes, they're the player he wants. Yeah. So I think, yes, Milan is nice. I wouldn't pay two ounces of notice to the Italian journalists and it, Milan fans putting shit up on Twitter because I don't think they know as much Either, either do we, and I don't think anybody really knows the situation. But I think for me, if you want him, if if he's the player you want, and it seems obvious considering we chased him, you know, to the end of the earth in January, as Dom said, he doesn't believe if the offer is right that the player is going to have an issue. From what I heard in January, he was well up for the project that was put to him. He was happy to move, as Dom said. It was all systems go, but Leal moved the goalpost. It appears to be that again. Am Milan going to match that deal? I don't believe they can. I don't believe they've got the money until that takeover happens. They haven't. They haven't matched the thirty, and I don't think they'll match thirty-six. So I don't really get the game that Leela playing. I think, you know, look. I think there's a bit of a, you know, it's kind of handbags at dawn and, and pistols at dawn. It's who blinks first. Um, you know, the West Ham player that was due for the medical today hasn't turned up. Um, I don't know that much about the lad. Apparently, Newcastle rumored to be after him. Is that a bit of posturing to maybe make Lille sit up a little bit? I reckon it is. There's a little bit of poker going on. So um, I would go, me personally, I would go and get him. I'm not saying you've got to go and pay 50 and 60 million. Lille keep up in the goalposts. But I think if he's the player we think he is and we want to build a future and the spine of the team around him and, you know, he, he becomes part of that spine with the likes of Bruno, with a decent striker and Botman and a good goalkeeper, then you go and get the money. And, you know, to see comments about we're not going after Botman, but we're going to pay 50 million for Ake. F fuck off, lads. If we're not going to pay 50 million for Botman, why the hell would we pay 50 million for Ake? It doesn't make any sense. So I, I think I think nobody really knows the situation. I think the club are still in for him. I don't believe that we've gone. I don't think the player does not want to come, like Dom said. So I think you just let this play out. Will the club get the man? I, th I think they will. I believe they will. I, I think he will be a Newcastle player eventually. That's my opinion. Um, other people don't think we will, think we should walk away. Each to their own, but I think you persevere. He's the, if he's the player we think he is, hold in. I think we get that man if we show that we want him. Daz, have people forgotten that, uh, I think it's already been alluded to, that in January he talked up Newcastle United as a project? and actually linked and, and liken them to the likes of Man City and PSG. Have we as a fan base forgotten that he said that? They were his words. The words that we've heard that apparently, and in, in Martin's alluded to it as well, that we've heard from Sven Botman have all come from Italian journalists. We haven't heard it from the mouth of Sven Botman, but the one thing that we did hear is in January, where we talked up Newcastle United as a priority ahead of AC Milan. You know, are, are we forgetting that as a fan base? No, no, we're not forgetting. But at the same time, he 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 played both cards. He he also praised AC Milan, but he 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 praised us first. Let's say they also the fact that uh, I think Mirdad fo follows him on on Twitter, and they they in, in the interview they, they actually mentioned him again. So 
it, it, it's it's like one a big circle around his name. That's the one we we want to get over the line. So I don't think they're going to go away. Uh, I think last week I said I was fifty one percent certain he's going to Newcastle. I'm going to drop my odds because every time I drop my odds, like the takeover, uh, it happens. So I'm going to say thirty percent just to hope, hope that it happens. Also <laughs> interesting, and people have put it in in the in the the the, the, the questions and the comments, and it's probably linked into a question for Lee. Is that Paulo Fonseca? Zaro is rocking up at Lille. Do you remember that name? Uh, so yeah, he's he's going. Uh, I know people are asking, would that have any influence? But I don't think so. It, 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 Botman has decided he's, he wants to go anyway. But uh, interesting that 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 uh, um, that his name pops up. And what's your thoughts, Lee, uh, on on uh, would that have any factor in in the Botman moving on? No, I don't think so. I think this this um, kind of like breakup of the the twenty twenty one championship winning team was always planned for this summer anyway. Barack Yilmaz is is on his way. Uh, Zeki Celik, you know the, those those players at Cheka, another one midfielder, is another player. Um, obviously, Leicester already got um, Sumare and um, Lil sacked uh, their manager today, uh, Jocelyn Guvenek, Guvenek, sorry, and. Um, I don't think it'll have any impact on it at all. I just think this is a case of Lille playing hardball. I don't think at all it's anything to do with Botman. I think Botman, Botman wants the Newcastle move. I think he's off enjoying his holidays at the moment. He's leaving it to his to his uh, agent. But I think as soon as, obviously, Lille make a, a, a return to, to pre-season training, um, he will want his future sorted out ASAP. And, um, yeah, I, I think he, he really wants a Newcastle move. I think Newcastle still want him. Um, I think the problem is with Lille. I think they notoriously will play hardball to get huge figures. I've, I've spoke previously of some of the fees that they've got, like for Nicolas Pepe, um, also for Victor Osserman to Napoli just a few years ago. They get in the region of 70, 80 million by holding out and playing hardball. And I think they're trying to do the same here. They have spotted an opportunity with obviously all of Newcastle's riches and they're going to try and push it as far as they can. Um, but it will get to a point where, you know, they, they will run out of time. Lille need the money. Don't forget that. You know, Lille need the funds. Um, yeah. That was I a remember, question in there, Lee. Is that the 1st yeah. of July date, mate? Is that what that links to? Is there yeah, something linked so. to 1st of July? Oh, yeah. hold on. What we got? Um, what's that? Oh, all right. Yeah, sorry. I'm reading it now. Uh, clearly. Um, I don't know if it's dead on the 1st of July. I'm, I, I'm unsure about that, but I do know that they are you know, how could they do have financial issues and um, it makes sense for them to 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 make this deal, do, get this deal done as soon as possible. Just if anything, just to try and reinvest some of it back into their team. Um, look, they didn't make Europe. They are one of France, uh, France's biggest football clubs. So, you know, not even getting into Europe is, is, is deemed a failure. But of, of course, they, they do have some debts that they need to they need to clear up. And again, in terms of that 1st of July date, I'm not 100% sure if that um, if that, if that's, um, applies to, to this in any way, shape or form. But look, I do think it's a deal that will go through. I think Newcastle have just got to stick it out. I think that Botman will probably appreciate Newcastle not throwing the towel in or turning their attentions to people like Nayef Agur, you know, or any other um, player. I think behind the scenes, I think Botman will be hoping that Newcastle can stick it out. Um, I'm sure, without saying anything, he's just as frustrated as over this is as, as, as Newcastle are. Um, I remember speaking to you guys in January saying that there will be a few deals that will go to the wire. Frustratingly, they will go down to the wire. I don't think this one will, but it almost feels like it is because you know, the link's been there for so long, um, you know, going back to January. But there's going to be some deals that are going to really drag on for Newcastle fans. So I think that's going to be quite frustrating in this window. Um, but look, He's, he's, he's a great player. He's been fantastic for the last couple of years. That's certainly I've been watching him. And, um, you know, he, he's he's a guy that's going from strength to strength. So, seriously, um, I can see it happening. Just, just, just kind of my advice would be to stick with it. Stick with it and uh, just try and rise above um, the games that Lille will inevitably play to to try and get just as squeeze as many pennies as possible out of Newcastle because that's ultimately what they do. Yeah, and, and once once they heard heard uh, Amanda and Mirda in the interview go pre- mentioning Botman again, and they'll they'll know that the, uh, Mirda follows them on Twitter. They'll do a bit of research in the boardroom. They go, yeah, we can we can squeeze another bit out of these. Uh, so they'll be they've almost been planning for it, I'd say. And shout out to to Tampa Toon as well. Thanks for the donation. Tampa, Tampa. Brilliant stuff. Thanks, Tampa. Um, 
And and I think, yeah, Chris, unless you've got anything you want to add on, on the Botman <laughs> situation, um, is there anything you want to add on that situation before we move on? Do you know what? Yeah, I think everyone's covered it really well. I mean, you know, just to add, I suppose, um, as somebody said, I forget who it was. I think I think Sven Botman is probably the number one target, if not one, you know, near the top of the targets uh, for the club. Um, and, you know, as they say, good things come to those who wait. And I suppose as a fan base, we've just got to be very careful because, you know, even then when we were talking, you know, it was like, oh, they've raised it by six million and blah, blah, blah. And I think it was Daz who said that, you know, we, we've we never had, um, and not that we would, because things like that don't get put out in the public, but no one's actually, you know, Lee haven't come out and gone, oh, Newcastle offered us 30, we want 36. It's, it's all kind of hearsay. And, you know, I'm sure Dom and uh, Lee will back this up. You know, all it takes is, um a journalist or you know a newspaper or anyone to kind of start a narrative and then people jump on it and then all of a sudden it becomes like gospel and you know like I, I, when i was reading the comments there on the side and i was seeing oh you know leo keep raising the price and most probably that is the case um but as we've saw with the italian journalists when they're saying you know what was what was one of the quotes like um Sven Botman detests Newcastle or something, and you just think, and then all of a sudden it just became this thing, and it's like, oh yeah, you can't stand it's, it's Newcastle. The truth, then. Yeah, exactly, and it's just, I suppose it's just about us all being careful and trying to trying to keep grounded. I mean, let's be honest, the, the transfer window has been open what six days, so like you know, it's it's a long, long window, isn't it? And I know that we're all keen, we all want to see that um, first player through the door or big signing, if you like. Um, but I suppose you know these these deals do take time, and as Lee already said, they will they will try and squeeze out every last penny that they can. Um, and it's to be fair, not unfortunately, not every deal is like a Kevin Trippier deal, is it? Where we just go wham bam and it's in. Um, there was probably weeks, months of preparing, and I know that we went in for them in January, but I'm sure the goalposts have been moved since then. Um, and as much as Lee'll need to sell, they will also know how much we want him. Um, and they'll know, obviously, the financial situation with AC Milan. So they're just trying to drag the heels in the hope that maybe we'll just turn around and go, yeah, it's 40 million, just get the deal done now. And then they will be smirking, thinking, great, good job we held out because we've just got an extra 10 million there. You know, it's it's all it's all guesswork, isn't it? And it's all games. But I think, I think we'll get there in the end. If we want him as much as we say we do, I think we get him. Um, if we go for option number two, three, four, whoever that is on the list, I, I, I've got no doubt that whoever we bring in for that left centre back position, um, you know, will will be will be a good player. Um just just before we move on from that, Pete, there was a question in the chat, and I suppose it's worth mentioning it now rather than going back to it. And I thought it was a really good question to ask Lee. It's from Leon. And Leon asks, Lee, is Botman the best left centre back in League Earn? Um <coughs> good question. I would say yes with a, they have a good, a very close second, and, and and that's based on last season's performances. Last season's performances, um, as a whole, some may say Presno Kimpembe, um, but I, I would probably say Botman, based on the last couple of seasons of performances. Yes. Okay. That no, sorry. Brings... Can I just? Sorry, can I just add as well, just going back to what you were saying earlier, actually, the French market has been incredibly quiet. Really, really quiet. Um, quieter than, than, than I've known it in years. So there's been really very few, very little movement so far in or out of French football. So I think what we need is is something here to kind of kickstart the French market because it's super, super quiet. Um, you know, worse than the, like I said, I've never, I've never known it the way it is. It's usually one or two deals that, that have happened, uh, one or two in the, in the offering. But at the moment, the even speculation's very, very quiet as well. So, um, unsure why, unsure why. Yeah. So just a bit of, bit of break in there on Twitter. So, uh, 90 minutes, Graham Bailey is reporting. Uh, Nayef Igard moved to West Ham proceeding, didn't turn up for second part of medical schedule in London today. Medical now book for tomorrow morning, despite Newcastle making two late approaches, Aguard to West Ham proceeding as expected. But there's quite a few people off the back of that tweet saying that's a little bit of Billy bullshit, but we'll wait and see. <laughs> but he didn't show up for his medical this afternoon. Um, yeah. And he wasn't at Ash Green. Apparently, from all accounts, um, West Ham had set up with cameras 
um, the media team and everything else. And Aguirre did not turn up for the second half of his medical um, at Ash Green this afternoon. And on top of that, and on top of that, uh, uh, Sky were, were saying that he was meant to have turned up yesterday for his other part of the medical and yeah. didn't turn up. He's now not turned up for the second day. And I think that's what's carried on with the West Ham meltdown off the back of that. So yeah, he's not turned up now for a second yeah. day for his medical. Um, so yeah. this is yeah. where the, the increased links uh, to Newcastle United are when you grow ever stronger. Now, look, we'll, we'll go to Air Guard. Um, uh, it, we might as well go there. And actually, yeah. really interestingly, um, it popped up today that there was a conversation that you had, Lee, with a, a friend of the channel, Sean Casey, about um, our guard um, back in uh, March, where um, I think the comments in a way, can't see what you've said, but basically, Sorry. yeah, um, you, you were talking back in March saying that you're one of the most informed, that he was one of the most informed players in, in League One at that particular time. Um, and you've obviously continued to have that sort of mindset on him. You know, what, what sets him apart to, to Sven Botman? Yeah, he's um, he's extremely organised. Um, I don't know if it's about what sets him apart from him. They're both very accomplished defenders. Uh, well, anything, very solid. Um, good, you know, goal scorers. Probably, if, if there's anything that he does probably better than Botman, it's a case of he scores goals. He scores more goals. He can contribute to the other end of the pitch really confidently and really well great in the air as you'd expect from you know i think he's uh, i think he's six about six five six four six five so he's, yeah six he's five a, he's, a, yeah, he's a big unit he's a, he's a big lad he's a big lad but this has really been um probably his real breakout season this year i mean he's obviously you know he's he's, he's performed admirably in previous times but this this past season he's been he's been excellent for for ren but ren have been excellent themselves the whole season um and he really took his uh took his place in that back line and he's just ran with it so again you know really organized positionally very very good you know tough to tough to get by you know he's, he's fairly pacey off off the um you know from, from a standing start he's you know um certainly kept the likes of Messi. I watched him particularly against PSG, so it kept the likes of Messi and, and Neymar at bay um, in, in, in both games, really. It was only a, a piece of magic from Mbappe that kind of breached the Ren defence um, in, 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 in the second game this season. But he's um, he's been really good and he's impressed the whole season. I'm not surprised there was interest from the Premier League. Absolutely not surprised. Um, I think, if anything, the one thing that surprised me is that um, it was West Ham coming in for him more than anything. Uh, I'm surprised that other teams weren't interested. So if there is actually some truth to these rumours that Newcastle are trying to like an 11th hour bid, then, you know, it, it wouldn't, you know, for me, that would be, that would, that, that would warrant good, some, a bit of good business. Um, it looks like maybe there may be something in it. I mean, how often do people not kind of turn up for miles or two, two yeah. days in a row? It's, exactly, it's, it's yeah. Media team, there, media team and everybody were there, Lee, this afternoon. Yeah. Media team were at Ash Green. It was all prepped. They had the barriers it's, up and everything else. All, exactly. It's all gone quiet. And this is obviously uh, a very rare situation. I don't know if Dom knows a little bit more in terms of uh, being closer to, to, to transfers um, and transfer dealings in terms of it, it, you know how they're structured and, um, and being there on the day, but this is this for me is it just seems a little bit different, a little bit strange. Like there's something else that, to this. Um, and I, again, I spoke to you late last night, Pete, didn't I, about this deal? We I was doing a piece for the Mail on it, and you know it seemed like the, it had, you know, I, I got I got the impression there was some legs in this. Um, so it's going to be really interesting over the next 24 hours how this pans out. Yeah, definitely. Have you heard anything, Dom, from your end, Newcastle related um, about a guard? No, but what I would say is when it originally broke, it was all from the West Ham end, and that is unusual for a club being effectively set to sign someone, then it's suddenly breaking, oh, Newcastle are coming in, and that's coming from West Ham side of things rather than Newcastle. So I'd say, like, like Lee says, it probably does have legs, but I'm speculating. I'm not privy to, to to this one. I'll hold my hands up, but because it's come from West Ham's end, and what we've been hearing from from uh, what's happening down at West Ham, I'd suggest there is some truth in it. In it, but um, you'd still expect a player who the deal is 
just a medical away from from getting done effectively and um, you'd expect it to go ahead but then when the player doesn't turn up it's sort of all up in the air now yeah definitely and uh like you said because it's come from the west ham end it's it, you know, it's why people are holding on to it a little bit more because it's not a, it's not expected from that point of view. Um, I, I've just got a few more. I've got a few more players that I would just want to run by um, uh, uh, Lee in particular because I know he's he, you, your your time is limited with us tonight. You've been obviously on your travels all day working, um, but um, uh, Demoral looking at defensive options. Demoral um, has been linked with Newcastle. Um, it looks like he's not going to continue at Atalanta. Um, Juventus don't seem like they want to keep him. Um, what are your thoughts about Demoral in, in the potential move to, to Newcastle, if it, if something was to materialise? I mean, he's got, he's got potential. There's no doubt about that. The problem with him, he's just not playing in the football. He's not played in a football. I think he's played something like 20 something times for Juventus. Uh, he obviously, he's gone on loan to, to Atalanta. He's certainly got potential, and there's certainly something about him. Um, you know, he's, I believe, is he tw- I believe, yeah, he's 20, yeah, there you go, right in front of me, 24. Yeah, so he's 24. You know, he, he's, he's, he's a player that's, um, you know, attracted some of the attention of some of the big clubs. And um, look, you're not going to go and play for a club like Juventus if you've not got something about you, or you know, you're not going to be, um, you know, making a move to a club of, of that stature. Um, I think he needs he needs a move to somewhere where he can be, a, you know, a solid starter. And um, you know, it, for me, not ahead of Sven Botman. He's not quite got the X factor Botman's got. Um, or even a girl, to be honest with you. And again, I've you know I've seen him play uh, multiple times to make that that, that assessment. Mm-hmm. But you know, if if it, if it's a plan B, then then maybe why not? Why not? But you know, I think that that certainly Newcastle should be sticking with their their, their options and, and certainly what they've gone for um, first and foremost before opting for, uh, for for anybody else. I think Newcastle are on the right lines with with, with who they're sounding out. Interesting. Um, just a quick uh, update on uh, if you have you heard anything. And this is to both Dom, Dom and Lee. I'll come to you, Dom, first. Ekatike, um, obviously, from from Ekatike's point of view, things have gone quite. It looked like the deal was was done, and and we were we'd already prepared a picture, and Daz had already prepared a picture <laughs> in preparation. Uh, Looks good in black and white, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah, it does look good in black and white. But you know. What is the situation with 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 Ekatike? You mentioned last week that there could be potential interest from PSG, which is why maybe the deal was held up. We're now hearing that Dortmund is still potentially interested. We're to, we're hearing that the agent is the one that may be holding up the deal because he's looking elsewhere. If you believe reports, where do you think it's at with Ekatike? Um, you know, in this situation right now. Yeah, this is another one that's getting a bit tedious. Um, Newcastle agreed a, a fee. Um, the club, as my understanding, like you say, I think it's down down to the agent and his re- representatives um, sort of holding out. Ultimately, it is very early in the window. Ekatike, high-scoring teenager in Europe last season, in, to- in the top five leagues anyway, um, is going to have a lot of interest holding out for the best deal for his client that is is my understanding anyway whether what that means for Newcastle I'm not sure but last week it did look like a deal was was pretty close certainly closer than Botman but just getting that final final touch getting um sat down with the agent and and sort of dotting the I's and crossing the T's it's just yet to happen Tom, can I just ask you a question on the back of that? Um, and we've spoke about this in, in detail on the show for n- numerous shows. Um, if, you know, you mentioned at the start of the show that um, a, the striker was our main a main option, you know, the main, mm. uh, the main place that we want to upgrade and fill up and whatnot. Do you think that bringing Eka TK in or just Eka TK in that striker position, do you think that's sufficient for next season? Or do you very much think that, you know, we'll be bringing in wingers as well and maybe they'll be interchangeable? Or do you feel that we, you know, we still require that out-and-out striker in the Callum Wilson mould? 
or do you think Akatike would be, you know, fine, and then we'd start with Wilson, Akatike, and Ward as our three main strikers, if you like? I think you still need another forward player, Newcastle. Well, it depends what the goals are, but as we understand it, Newcastle really want to sort of push um, into that top half and sort of flirt challenge with the European places next season. And I think if you've got Ekatike, 19-year-old Callum Wilson, who, as good as he is, injury-prone, if you get 20, 25 games out of him next season, you've done all right. Um, and Chris Wood, who ultimately is, while he's done a, a good job is in, in, in part, his sort of scoring record leaves a lot to be desired. So I think you need another forward player. An out and out striker or maybe an inside forward who can contribute sort of 10, 15 goals a season or has that sort of ability to do that at least um, is, is something <coughs> Newcastle should should be looking at um, in addition to Ekatika as well. Because as good as he is or in, in terms of um, his potential and, and what he's done um, last season, he is still only 19, still unproven in the Premier League and you can't be relying on those three players um, if you want to be a consistent top half team challenging for those European places so yeah no. fair point and um, just a couple of things before um, uh, I know you have, you have to go Lee and appreciate you taking the time um, uh, Kalamendu Kalimendu, if I'm pronouncing that right. Kalimendu, Kalimendu. That's the one. Uh, uh, I, I, knew, I knew I wasn't going to pronounce his name right. Um, yeah. Jesus Christ, you two lads got to practice that last night, could you not? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, because uh, I, I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Leaders, I have no idea. Um, but look, the, um, there are obviously links between uh, is, is a Leicester, and I think there may be another team involved in him, but he's come out of left field really um on loan from long uh, last season um there's obviously been a rejected approach from from forest how good is this young lad and and do you think he's the type of player that newcastle should be looking at as a young player yeah he's look he's, he's a parisian boy is uh yeah, he had a season on loan at Lons and he did really, really well last season. Um, he's got some fantastic goals, really fitting him well. And in some ways, it's a shame he's not going back there because uh, I think he'd really benefit from another year at, at Lons. Uh, so, again, a breakout season for him in Liga um, and he just looked like a duck to Dr. Water. Um, I think a move to the Premier League would be huge for him in the same mould it would be for Kitike, where it would certainly come as like you know a huge huge step up um i know ideally he wanted to come back to psg and you know and fight for his place and you know we all know that psg's transfer strategy is very very different um and not one which kind of caters to their to their young players um hopefully that will change over the coming you know the, over the coming years um i'd like to see him come back i think a lot of fans would like to see him come back and be a part of the first team squad but ultimately is a guy that's only going to develop with game time now if he can be offered game time which i mean i've heard today that leeds put, had submitted a 20 million bid um apparently today which actually wouldn't be the worst kind of move i think for him um if newcastle were interested in him i think what newcastle would get is they'd get a guy who could play through the middle we could play off either side as well very very pacey very composed in his finishing um got a hell of a hell of a shot on him as well real real powerful powerful guy um only young Got, again, plenty of years ahead of him, lots of development ahead of him. Um, but, you know, just an, a real good out and out attacking footballer. He's got, lot, again, lots and lots of potential to grow still. Um, I think his next move is really, really key for him. And um, I just hope he chooses the, the, the right club where he's going to get enough game time. But certainly a really promising up and coming player. Interesting. And interesting that Leeds are now one that comes in for him. Um, and it definitely one to, to to keep an eye on from that point of view. Um, look, uh, I'll, I'll leave it there, Lee, because I know you've ob obviously you've, you've been busy all, all day. I appreciate you you coming on. Um, My pleasure. Fingers, uh, fingers crossed there'll be some other deals. I'm sure there will be over the next week that we'll talk about when Botman. You're on. Botman, got to get it wrapped up surely. Quick question for Lee before he goes. A uh, big retreat now. What's cooking, Lee? What's oh, on the menu? Mate. Oh, chicken. Again. <laughs> chicken again. Yeah. yeah. 
chicken, um, broccoli. Oh, sick of it. <laughs> Have a better answer for next week, Lee. Come on. Yeah, I will. <laughs> uh, the, the reason why I know he's sick of it is because he's on a training regime at the moment where that's all he really can eat. So I know that's why he's sick of it. <laughs> but that's but then, why. Yeah, hopefully something something better soon in the office for sure. But um, cheers, guys. Good speaking to you. Thanks for having me on as always. Really appreciate it. And uh, great show. Cheers. Thanks. No worries, Take Lee. Care. Cheers, man. We'll talk to you Take soon. Take care, guys. Take care, Take care mate. Cheers. Great to have Leon on the show, as always, um, with, with his opinions on various players, whether it's French or Italian football. Um, I want to move on to a different section now, and um, uh, I want to look at, you know, one or two players that we've been linked with quite recently. Um, and I'll be honest with you, it was a surprising link for me to see this morning as it popped up on Sky Sports. And it's a link with James Ward-Prowse. Now, uh, <laughs> Martin's arms in the air. Now, if he's in the chat right now um, and watching the show, Daryl, who's been a friend of the channel even in January as well, he's a big fan of um, a, a number of different players. But James Ward-Prowse, he's the one that he likes more than How anyone. many times have I said, this season... James Ward Prowse yeah. is a player I would snap, and I got ridiculed, ridiculed for it. Uh, uh, as well, I've been shouting out all season, all yeah. season. I, and and you know what? I was surprised to see the link uh, pop up because obviously we've been linked with so many, you know, uh, European midfielders, but James Ward Prowse has popped up, and this is partly why. The, the the West Ham meltdown, particularly with Dan Lawless from, from West Ham Fans TV, has been a meltdown. Because we're not only looking at Ergard in potentially stealing him, we're not only looking at Ariola potentially stealing him, but as it says in the Sky Sports um, little clip there, uh, it looks like we're we're in uh, arguments and in fighting mode with, with West Ham again for James Ward-Prowse. Now, look, I don't know how, how much truth there is to this i don't know um dom and i'll come to you first you know how much do we know uh, about this deal and, and were you aware of it before it popped up um from sky sports today it's been been rumored previously certainly I, I wouldn't say i was um overly in the know about it but um heard heard his name mentioned before on a, a sort of long list of players because he ticks a lot of boxes for newcastle newcastle looking sort of a, a longer term, maybe more progressive, more um, dynamic midfield option to maybe John Joe Shelby, who's the wrong side of 30 now, and James Ward-Prowse, 27, in his prime in England international. And I think Southampton, it sort of went under the radar just how poor Southampton were last season, particularly towards the back end of the season. So he could be potentially looking, looking to move on because he doesn't want to be in a relegation battle while he's trying to get in the England squad. So if he can move to a, say, top half Premier League side, what Newcastle are hoping to be, and um, get a decent run of games start every week and be comp competing at the right end of the table, then that ticks boxes for him as well. So I'm, I'm fairly confident if, if Newcastle went after James Ward-Prowse that he'd be open to, to moving um, and making the switch to Newcastle. Yeah. Interesting, Mark. I'll come. To, I'll come right back to you because obviously it'd be rude not to, seeing that you, you banged the drum for so long. But look, just how how good is James Ward Prowse, and how what would he bring to Newcastle? I think, as Dom said, I think I think he ticks the boxes that Eddie Howe would want. I think if you look at somebody like an Ekatike, even if you look at how we could set up, you could have him a little bit further forward or playing off that left like he does. Yeah. Um, and did last season with Rems, you could push Bruno further up, who's obviously shown an eye for goal in the games that he's played with Ward Prowse just sitting behind maybe him and Joe Linton. So I think there is room for him in the team. He's got that ability to play long and short ball. Uh, look, he's an absolute ace at free kicks. Obviously, we've got Trippier as well, but to have somebody like him in the Arsenal, I think if you look at what potentially our forward line or forward five could be, there's a potential there for a lot of free kicks of mistimed tackles. I think when you've got an ASM, possibly an Ekatike, 
Wilson in the box. You've got someone like Joe Linton marauding forward, Bruno with the trickery. I think he just ticks the boxes. And I think if you look at the whole philosophy of it's a, you know, it's evolution more than revolution, he brings in that absolute bag of Premier League experience. He replaces somebody probably in Shelby that isn't going to get as many games. I think he's been really, really good in, as Dom said, a poor team at Southampton. And I think Newcastle and a move to the Northeast would tick every single one of his boxes. I'd love to see him in a black and white shirt. I think he could be absolutely top, top class for us. Would he cost a lot of money? Yeah, probably. 50 million? Not sure. I think you'd get him for a bit less than that. But yeah, I think I think he'd be class. Is there legs in it? I'm not convinced, but I'd love to see him. Definitely. Chris, uh, obviously, <laughs> Mark's talked him up an absolute treat. Um, and, 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 you know, Dom's obviously said that you know that there has been r- relative links there with with with, with Dominic, uh, not Dominic Cabello. Yeah. <laughs> no, Dom no. signing. There you go. No. Breaking news. He's, he's, he's <laughs> the wrong. That, that, I, I, I thought Pete because Dom's in, in, yeah. in with us tonight. I've just said Dom out of the. Why would I even say Dominic Cavalier? Like, I don't even want him at Newcastle United. You guys already know that. Um, yeah. James Ward Prowse, right? James Ward Prowse is the guy. Chris, James Ward-Prowse, um, from your perspective, you know, Martin talked him up uh, an absolute treat. Um, do you think he is the type of player that we need to bring in in our midfield? You know, our midfield is quite tight at the moment with the players that we've got. You know, we've got Bruno Gamerez, we've got Joe Linton, um, question marks over Shelby, which has obviously been already said. Um, yeah. Sean Longstaff signed a new deal. You know, do you think he's the type of player we need to bring into that that kind of group of midfielders? <sighs> Mart's going to hate me for this. I, I'm I'm not so sure. Uh-oh. I'll be I'll be Uh-oh. honest. I'm not I'm not so sure. And to be honest, Pete, you know when you said Dominic Carvert Lewin when you were talking about, I thought the reason I was going, Pete, Pete, I I kind of class, I kind of class James Ward Prowse in the same bracket as him. I know they're completely different players, but what I'm trying to say is. You're going to pay, and Martin's right when he says, you're going to pay 50 million north for James Ward-Prowse. Is he worth it? I don't think so. I, I, I totally take what Martin said about his set pieces. I think they're absolutely outstanding. Um, I don't think you can take that away from him, um, you know, whether it be corners, free kicks, whatnot. I, I I think it was Mad Mag Mark who put something in the chat, and it was interesting because I, I whenever I've watched Southampton, and don't get me wrong, again, like I said earlier, I'm not a massive Southampton fan, so I don't watch Southampton all the time. Mm-hmm. But for me, like you, it, over the course of a season, you know, I'll see him whip a few balls in, you know, where, where you know um, Southampton score headers, or he'll get the odd free kick, and I think, oh, yeah, that was good, yeah, that was decent, but. I never come away from a game that I've watched with Southampton and think bloody hell, James Ward Prowse ran that game. I just, I just, I never, he never leaves a, a lasting impression on me. Um, and as I say, when I saw, I'll have to see if I can find it. When I saw this comment, here we go from Mad Mad Mark. Apart from being a deadly free kick taker, James Ward Prowse has poor stats for a Premier League midfielder. Now I don't know that, but when I first seen it, I thought, mm. and like I say, when you mentioned Dominic Calvert Lewin. A bit, a bit. I kind of put him in the same bracket. I'm not obviously he's an England international. I'm not taking that away from him. And it, you know, would he improve our midfield? Yeah, he probably would. Um, you know, when you talk about the likes of Isaac Hayden, who's gone out, you look at John Joe Shelby, who we probably need to upgrade. Even though I am a fan of John Joe Shelby, um, is he better than Sean Longstaff? Probably is. Um, but I suppose if you're going to be paying that 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 amount of money at that premium level, I think I think you go you go into Europe. And I think you get better value for money. I think, like like we were talking about the other week, Pete, you know, when we were talking about the likes of Seco Fafana, players yeah. like that. And I think, would he bring more to the team? Would he be cheaper? Would he be on less wages? You guarantee um, he would cost 50, 60 million, uh, James Will Prowse. He'd probably be on 120 grand a week plus um, because he can command that because he knows he gets it. As soon as he gets that big move from Southampton, he'll get mega wages. Um, and I don't know, I just... There's something missing from it. Like I don't, I don't, you know, I don't see, I don't see a lot in him as a player, other than you know his fantastic technique, as I say, was uh, at dead ball situations. I just don't, I don't see this all-round combative midfielder that's is everywhere. That, is that what you were saying about Mad 
Mad Mark. Yeah, is, that comment. Is that yeah. comment? I, I, yeah. I just come across it just by chance, and I weren't mm. sure if that was the one that you mentioned. It, yeah, it, I don't it, know it, that, Pete, for fact. I don't know that, but that doesn't surprise me, is what I'm saying. You see, a lot of people say that. A lot of people say that, and look, you know, more. I want to get your thoughts on this. Obviously, Daz and Dom as well. Like a lot of people say that, other than his free kick and set piece specialist specialism, which which is outstanding, yeah. there's not much else to him. But you know, I, I work with a Southampton fan who, who who watches them obviously religiously, and the one thing that they say, and I don't know whether any of you guys have noticed this, that actually he covers every blade of grass on the pitch during the 90 minutes his 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 distance covering is meant to be really really high in terms of how hard he works off the pitch and and I can't help but think in the top of my mind if you look at the way in which we press and how hard we work in our midfield little trio mm. that that's the kind of player that we would probably want and need in that I mean I don't know you know, Dom, Daz, Mark, what, what are your thoughts on that with, with regards to uh, what Mad Mag Mark put? And, and do you think that, you know, he, he offers more than just a set-piece specialism? Uh, I was just having a quick browse of some of his stats. His, <laughs> his, his long passing stat is much better than his short, according to some of the bits I've just had a quick browse at there. The interesting thing, though, over the last four or five seasons, he's bagged at least 10 goals a season. Now, obviously, he's getting the free kicks, and I think, I'm not sure, does he take the penalties for Southampton? Possibly. I'm not. I think he does. Not, not 100% sure. Um, but he does. he does. He, over the last three seasons, or certainly last season, he created 47 big chances, so 47 goal chances that led to a goal more than four other mid main midfielders in the top six so he's got he's got it in his bag and i suppose something i was just thinking about when chris was talking was has he just gone a little bit stale at southampton because he's been maybe. there for so long maybe yeah, yeah. maybe That's you know sometimes point. it's you know sometimes the change of scenery is as good as the rest as they say so does he you know i, I think there's a player there i think it, you know he doesn't get a call up if there's not something in the box of tricks. Um, you know, Paul Oxy just sent me a message there. So he didn't look, you know, he looked a bit disinterested in the warm-ups and stuff for England the other night. You know, is he gonna get a is he gonna get ahead of some of the guys in that England midfield? Probably not. You know, is he is he is Grealish any better for a hundred million? It, it, well, Paul Oxy it, just said in the chat there they're on about 80 million. And it, it, it wouldn't yeah. surprise me. This is the. This oh yeah, I think it'll be. Look, act. I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's. It look. I, I, and I said there, it'll be fifty million plus. Is yeah. it what we yeah. spend on? Somebody put in a few. Offered me him as opposed to Paqueta. Who would you go for? Obviously, I'd go for Paqueta. But I'm just thinking, the mix. Does he tick the boxes for the club? Is it somebody that work out well? Does the lad want to move? I think he probably does. Hmm. Would he be everybody's cup of tea? No. But does he? Does he give us a bigger option on a Shelby? Do you think he oh, does? Yeah. Yeah, I think he does. If you yeah. look at other midfielders going, Madison, other players like that, 50, 60 million, you know, what are the money? Liverpool just spent 100 million on Nunes. Yeah. So but where, where is the transfer market at the minute? What is what is the current going rate for an England midfielder? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, that's, I'm, not, I'm not having more price of 50, 60, 70, 80 million, whatever you're talking about. No way. Uh, not at that price. He's, he's going to be 28 in November, uh, as you see there. Um, but yeah, apart from the free kicks, and we have Trippier for that, and with, uh, who knows who else we bring in that, that could potentially take a free kick as well. So uh, that's my thoughts on it. If he if he yeah. rocks up, fair enough, we'll support him, but not not at the price. No, uh, we, I've, I've clicked it on to the, uh, I've gone on obviously to Sofa Score to have a little bit more of a look at James Ward Prowse Premier League for this season. You look at his heat map. That says to me that someone that covers a lot of distance. Yeah, he's everywhere. And, and the he's distance, it, the distances aren't in there in terms of what it is like from 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 game to game. You, you look at his stats. You look at obviously, you know, um, Brighton. That's got to be probably eleven to twelve k. I would think around a pitch. Yeah, and, and you know what? It's really interesting you say that, Mark, because the last time I remember, I, I remember seeing it, whether it's a Monday night in football or whether it was it was something on Sky. 
where they had his distance covering and it was around that that number it was yeah it was around the 11 or 12 K. i think the same when we played them on the monday night football pete as well i remember looking back at his stats and i think he covered something like 13.26 mm. kilometers or something i remember looking at him thinking jesus christ like that's you know you don't I, I think he's just one of those players that does go under the radar you don't necessarily yeah. unless he gets a free yeah. kick you he don't actually you're not really looking at the groundwork he puts in but look, again, you can see from the chat, he's not everybody's cup of tea. There'd be arguments galore over price. But look, he's another name that's floating around. There's obviously something in it if the club like him and Eddie Howe likes him. In fairness as well, looking at his looking at his ratings there, I'm giving look. him a bit of a defence here. Um, what is that? 7.5, 8.6, 7.1, 7.1, 6.4, 7.1. 7.1. Yeah. So he's obviously a very steady Eddie. And I've got mm. no doubt that he would probably run his socks off. So your friend's probably right. Pete, you know, when he says that he puts the 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 yardage in and stuff, and I, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't, you know, question that. Does he does I he think, bring that graph that Eddie Howe wants in the team? But, it seems like probably it. Not, ticks it ticks probably. a box. Ticks yeah, a box. Like it. But but, but just, look, we, we, we've not even talked about that. Some of the key, some of the key stats. I'm circling it here. Ten goals. Yeah, yeah. that's what I said five here. On six. average, last last five six seasons, Pete, he's done ten goals, eight, seven. Seven and back to eight, and a couple yeah. of seasons of five. Yeah, if you're looking at around 15 goal contrib goal goal contributions, whether it's goal scored or assists per season, surely that's a player that we should be looking at. Dom, I want to get your thoughts on this as well. Like looking at some of these stats on Sofa Score, you know, these are these are stats that surely that that, that should be that, that Newcastle United should be looking at in terms of improving their midfield. Yeah, I think that's what you have to look at, really, is would James Ward-Prowse make Newcastle United better? I think he would. I think he'd be certainly maybe not a guaranteed starter every week, but he'd certainly tick boxes and be a good option in that midfield. But like everyone said, 50 million plus whatever to tick a box is an awful lot of money. And I think absolutely Newcastle would just be priced out, even though I think he would be a good addition to the side. This the stats sort of back it up in terms of what he contributes in terms of goals, albeit I'd probably say the vast majority of them will be um, from set-piece situations, penalties, etc. But I, whenever I've watched James Ward-Prowse, I've, I've been relatively impressed by him. I think he is a he's a forward-thinking player, he's a hard worker, and and I think he would improve, improve uh, Newcastle, but you can't be uh, spending £50 million plus to just tick a box for a player who may or may not start. Yeah, I, I think it, the, the key thing to it is that he signed, if I'm right in thinking, he signed a new contract, was it last season, uh, last summer, on the back of Aston Villa, um, having a bid of 40 million, or 30, 40 million rejected. Obviously, they were using the, the, the Jack Grealish money in terms of making that. That, that that money kind of stretch so um you know it, it's it's a really difficult situation for newcastle in in whether we would sign that sort of player now look you know dan lawless was was kind of making a bit of an issue with the fact that west ham and newcastle are going in for the same player and blah 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 but i'm not being funny i don't think west ham are spending 50 million um, on James Ward Price. I don't think they've even got the money to do that. No, so I think no. that link is very much about Newcastle more so than the, the than West Ham. Um and he might be angry about that and I might get a message off him after that. <laughs> so regardless yeah. but the reality is is that we've got more money to be able to spend and buy a player like that. I truly believe if James Ward Prowse gets taken out of that Southampton team, they get relegated. They That's do, just yeah. my opinion. I, I think the yeah. fact that he scored and had such an influence in their team has kept them in the league. You look at their running at the back end of the season, it was atrocious. And he was the only one that was keeping them going by his free kick specialism, by his ability to create things from set pieces or in game. Um, he had a massive, massive influence on that. Um, Another P, player. I, I was going to say, P. I don't want to turn it into a uh, a West Ham podcast, even though I know Dan would absolutely love that. Uh -huh. But I'm 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 just thinking to myself, you know, I, I look at well, I think back. I know obviously Mark Noble's retired at the end of the season, but I, I look at the West Ham midfields and I think you know they've got Declan Weiss, they've got Suchek, 
Um, I know Lanzini sometimes plays in the middle. What what's James Ward Prowse getting that midfield? Interesting. Unless Teclan Rice goes elsewhere. Yeah, well, it, yeah, that would probably be it, Mark. I think that would be the turn. Unless life. unless he was, and I I don't think West Ham sell him this season. Not, as you said, not to get into a West Ham podcast, but I can't see Rice going nowhere this season. Yeah, and uh, I think that's the only that's the only way that War Prowse goes to West Ham. I agree. I, I agree. I, I think I think they find it very very difficult to 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 let. Declan Rice leave because of how important he is. I think if he leaves, War Proud probably comes in because they'll use some of that money. But otherwise, I don't. I don't think Declan Rice leaves. Uh, it, that, that again, that's just my opinion. But yeah. uh, look, uh, another player that has been linked with Newcastle, uh, albeit tentatively, or depending on what what you think, is um, Christian Eriksen um, and Scott Wilson from uh, the Echo had mentioned that we would been in preliminary talks with Christian Eriksen. There are obviously links with Man United and Tottenham, which it says in, in, in the piece. Um, but it's very, very clear at this point in time that he's not going to stay at Brentford. You know, do we feel that we've got a chance of getting Christian Eriksen or do we think that's a little bit too far out of reach and a Man United and Tottenham are likely to steal our, our thunder. Dom, have you heard anything from from the Christian Eriksen point of view? Other than the initial talks, nothing new. Um, I think he's one of the most going to be one of the most sought after free agents in terms of the Premier League uh, this summer. So when you've got teams who are in Europe like Manchester United and Tottenham looking at him, among others, uh, quite a few others clubs abroad as well, um, it's going to be hard to compete with that. He is a Classy, classy players we saw in the sort of half season he had at Brentford. Um, I remember his first game when he came on against Newcastle. Newcastle absolutely cruising, 2-0 up. Brentford down to 10 men. He came on in 10 minutes. Brentford actually had a bit of a spell. and He was at the heart of that. Then, obviously, Bruno came on and ran the show for the last 20 minutes. But I thought at, at that point, Brentford could be in a bit of trouble, um, given the momentum um, in the wrong way they were um, sort of suffering at that point but Christian Eriksen really sort of helped get them out of it and they survived comfortably in the end and he's shown he's still capable of producing at the top top level and Newcastle certainly interested but they are one of one of many definitely Mark, we'd, we'd heard we'd heard some like little snippets of rumours that that Ericsson had been in Newcastle for talks. We, we'd yeah. heard that potentially that he is the guy that, that Newcastle really, really want. Um, you know, how good would Ericsson be for our Newcastle midfield? We've, we've talked about War Prowse. How would Christian Ericsson fit in, in into this Newcastle Newcastle United midfield? I think he's a player that can unlock a defence and put a ball somewhere that no other player sees it. I think yeah. his vision, some of the passing and some of his passes through early vision and one-touch movement for Brentford from when he signed was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And I think if he'd been at Brentford for a full season, he probably would have been up there with player of the season um, amongst some of the Premier League players because I thought he was outstanding. Um, would you take him? Would, you know, where, does, where does he fit? <sighs> um, look, it's... It's a, it's a bit of a hard mix with, you know, Joe Linton's played so well. Bruno, again, you can put him further up. Certainly the games I watch for Brentford, he seemed to be playing on that right-hand side. So where does that put? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to stop you there. Did we on. really? Uh, and look, he was our player of the season, Joe Linton. Like we, yeah. we can't disrespect him. But do we really discard Christian Eriksen for Joe Linton as, as a player? No, no, no. Like, what I was going to say was I wonder with the ASM thing. Him. Ericsson was playing, if you look at a lot of those games, you look at the game we played against uh, Brentford, he played He played on the right-hand side. Pete, I think, predominantly, he kind of yeah. came from, from inside yeah. the midfield. Covers the ground, yeah. first time passing. I think his creation is, is way up there. Um, so, yeah, you'd absolutely take him. Will he come to Newcastle? I'm not convinced. Will he go to Spurs? There's a sentimental piece to it, but I don't think mm. he does because... They've got Perisic. They've got, you know, Son playing further up. 
where where does he fit in amongst that Spurs midfield? I'm not I'm not sure. Going back to Spurs, does does he get the game time with Conte? I'm not convinced. If he goes anywhere, I think he goes to Man United. I think he would he would absolutely turn that midfield round with Bruno, or the other Bruno, should I say, before people jump on me. The second. Um, <laughs> The yeah, Bruno? Bruno? yeah, the less the le- the 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 lesser player Bruno uh, the plays in red. Um, so yeah, I think I can see him more so going there, Pete. Where, but yeah, look, would you take him on Newcastle? Absolutely, you get two seasons out of him. He was class, and and you know, you know, look, listen, Brentford took a chance, and fair dues to them. They did their due diligence. They took a chance on him, and he kept them in the Premier League. If you ask me, so would you take him? Absolutely, one hundred percent. Would he be interested? Maybe, maybe, maybe. The Newcastle project floats his boat. From again, Pete, we heard snippets. He definitely spoke to the club. Yeah. He definitely met. So, funnier things have happened. But I think if I was a, if I was a betting man, I, I would say Man United have to be a favourite. I would think. I just don't see the Spurs connection unless you lads think otherwise. I'm, I'm, I, I will be. I don't. I just don't know where he fits. Do you know what? It's an interesting one, that Mark, because when, when, when I first saw the clubs linked, so obviously we were linked and Man U and Tottenham, and I was thinking to myself, why would you go to Man United? And was he really want to go back to Tottenham? And what's interesting about the free links, and again, I, I don't know how you boys feel about this, but the, the more I thought about it, obviously the link with Man United, um, you know, they, they desperately need, you know, a, a reshuffle in their in their whole team, let alone midfield. Um, but obviously Ten Hag, who, you know, has come from Ajax, and correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't um, wasn't uh, Ericsson part of like you know the Ajax youth? You know that's yeah, kind he of came where through, he started he came through the academies yeah. and stuff. I think he did, didn't yeah. he? So that's yeah. going to be that's going to be you know part of his journey. You know he he will know all about Ten Hag, no doubt. Um, so he would probably be you know more than happy to go and play for um, Ten Hag at Man United. And then obviously you've got Tottenham, his former club. Um, and then to add into that mix, you've got Conte, who was the former manager at Inter Milan. Was it Conte who actually signed Ericsson for Inter Milan? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's right. right. So, so you've got that and to add into the mix. And then also with ourselves, you know, hopefully, and, you know, I'm sure I'm, I'm absolutely not denying it or doubting it, Mark. Hopefully, you know, he has gone for talks with us. And as Dom said at the start, yeah. interestingly, he... Um, He's, yeah, there's a link with Trippier, obviously. And also, you know, he, he made his, his return to football, if you like, at, against Newcastle. And the Newcastle fans give him a fantastic reception. So he's probably got that little, you know, because I, I do remember, you know, watching the game and the Newcastle fans did give him a fantastic reception, as, as most football fans would, don't get me wrong. But, you know, that could be stuck in the back of his mind. And he's thought, you know what, great fan base, brand new owners, um, exciting new project. So I'd say I'd say the three clubs, Man United, Tottenham, and ourselves, we've probably all got an equal chance of getting um, Christian Eriksen to the club. And as Pete highlighted to me the other night on a show, you know, if if it's a case of do you pick Paqueta or Eriksen, well, one of them's free and one of them's fifty million. So if we were yeah. to sign Christian Eriksen, um, not only does he vastly improve the team. Uh, which I had doubts, by the way, Mark, what you were saying, you know, about uh, where he would fit in. But I'm sure with his quality, you'd probably find a position for him. Um, you know, that that's under no doubt or no illusion. Um, but you're also saving yourself on your FFP and then you can start mm-hmm. to look elsewhere. So it, it, it's an interesting one. And I, yeah. I think if he's come for talks, he must be interested. Otherwise, he wouldn't have come for talks. And I think the other thing with that, Chris, as well, makes perfect sense is that you don't, you know, you could give that time then for Paqueta to see out another season with Leon. Yeah. Ericsson does 12 months, 18 months, and you 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 could move for Paqueta the following summer. So it you know it, it does make quite good commercial sense as well. Yeah. Definitely. Let's see. Look, i I'll, I'll come to you, come to you Daz uh, from this point of view. You look at some of these performances particularly in May. You know, you look at the he's you know he's he's getting assists, but in, in, in more importantly, he's playing well. He's playing like exceptionally well. You know, you look at this, you know, um, playing at an eight, seven point six, seven point seven, seven point five, eight point three. Uh, you know, away ever uh, away <clears throat> Everton. He's he's pulling in fantastic performances, and in eleven games played. Um, started 10 of them, he's made five goal contributions, scored one, assisted four. But you look at his stats, and the, and the real key stats in what makes him such a good player, 
You know, his accurate passes per game, 81%. Accurate passes in his own half, 90%. You know, accurate passes in the opposition half, 68 Like, he's he's really, really good with the ball. And his use of the ball in a team that's not great, in a team that's newly promoted, I just think that's amazing. Like, and I think to myself, and I don't know whether you agree with this, Daz, if he can do that in a Brentford side, what could he do in a Newcastle side alongside a Joe Linton or and or and a Bruno Gamares? Yeah, as, as a free transfer, uh, he would be a great signing for us uh, and a good s- squad player as well uh, going into the season for a bit of rotation. But um, I'm going to cut your, your, your question short, Pete. I, I, I thought, yeah, we were in with a running firm. But then, yeah, as, it, as you've all mentioned, Spurs and Man United. And so when I saw those coming into the equation and the, the previous links he's had to those, the clubs and the managers involved, let's say, uh, I just said, no, it's not going to happen. And he's mentioned, he said, I think his quote was, uh, he'd like to play in the Ch- Champions League again. It's not his priority because he's played, played before. Uh, but I just I just can't see it happening now. Um, yeah, he came for talks. Well, why wouldn't he come for talks? Listen to all options. But with, with like... I, I just can't. I, not, now that Spurs and Man United are in the mix, I can't see him coming here now to us. No, uh, look, it's it's one of those things where obviously we 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 are kind of the the third wheel wheel in in this link, you know, mm. with with Tottenham and Man United now. What's already been said in terms of Tottenham? Yeah, do you ever really want to go back? Is it really the same? If anyone's watched the the Tottenham documentary, he was desperate yeah. to get out yeah, of the club. Yeah, wait. Yeah, absolutely desperate to get out of the club. Do you really want to go back when you were desperate to leave the club beforehand? So, you know, does that move Tottenham out of the equation? Yeah. Does it then leave us and Man United? And then you look at Man United. They're a free fall at the moment. They're they're struggling to get hold of the likes of De Jong and, and a number of other players. They lost out on Nunes, you know, it, it, which I'm still crying oh. a few tears about uh, each yeah. night. You know, I'm still, <laughs> still not happy about losing out to Nunes. But look, it, it, you know, from that point of view, they, they're not rebuilding in the way that they expected to. So, can yeah. we steal a march on that? And that's something that maybe we we can potentially hold on to. As, as we move forward. But the, the for me, the Ericsson link is really, really interesting. It's one that I think we need to keep an eye on because I don't think it's as clear-cut and as done as what we maybe think it is. Mm. Um, mm. And, and we've got to remember, a number of people have said that have come on Loaded, um, loaded Mag and UFC in that the summer situation is very fluid. And although at this point in time, it looks like the deal was dead with the potential of Ericsson and it looks like he's going elsewhere, potentially it could change just like that. So it's one to keep an eye on, but we know that his talent is there for all to see. Um, one other player that I want to look at, um, and look, Chris, I know you, you've had a you've had a kind of um, an interest in, in this young man. And, and we, we've had a few links in, in the last few days Oh, to a week uh, with, with this particular player, and it's Januka Skamaka. Um, we haven't talked really much strikers tonight, but it's important that we, I think, we look at strikers because it's very, very clear that there's a striker, um, a strikers that are linked with Newcastle, and we are clearly looking for a striker now. Um, Skamaka has said he's be, he, he would be open for a move abroad. PSG have been rumored to be the team. That are looking to sign him, Arsenal, shock, West Ham, and, <laughs> and as well, Newcastle United interested in uh, Gianluca Scamacca. Um, but as it says here, um, very much the same from the Athletic is that there are a number of teams that are trying to get hold of him. Now you've looked at Gianluca Scamacca, um, uh, Chris, and, and like you, you've kind of. You know, watch some of his clips. You've seen his play. Uh, you're quite excited about the fact that he could potentially be a Newcastle player. Yeah, do you know you what? Pete, I, uh, 
Yeah, oh, no, he's no Andy Callum, mate. We know that. He's no Andy Callum. <laughs> but uh, no, we um, we we were linked with him. Well, it was a number of months back, I think, actually. And then I I forget what the story was. And to be honest, I haven't looked into it. But apparently, he's got a very interesting uh, history, like a family history. Um, again, I'm got, I'm probably gonna have to research that because someone said apparently his family is quite interesting. Um, but no, I I just I because we've been linked to him a few times, and because like he's on the radar, but he's not prominent in terms of uh, players that you know seem to be incoming very quickly and um, i thought you know if he's on the list i'll have a, i'll check him out and uh oh, i tell you what the highlight reel i saw he was he was he looked absolutely lethal and um you know i'll have to see if i can find the clip and i'll send it on to you boys to have a look at but he, he looked like a striker who had everything Um i'm thinking he's a good age he's looking to move again you know you shouldn't base it on this but you know when teams like psg are interested that's never a bad thing um and he just he just looks he looks like the kind of striker that would uh flourish you know like in the premier league um and i just thought you know f- for me i i do i do believe we do need an out and out striker and i'd love to have a bit of competition for callum wilson or perhaps you know bring someone in who can play alongside callum wilson if we decide to go two up top and for me based on the prices that are being quoted i i think I, I think you know he, he should be a player that's um, on the on the target list because he looked he looked really impressive from what I saw of him. He looks a terrific striker, and um, he's got a lot of interest at this moment in time. Look, Dom, I don't know whether whether you've heard anything about him being linked to Newcastle United. He's certainly a player in Europe that's being sought after. Um, I don't know how much you know about uh, Jan Lucas. Skamaka, but he's had a fantastic season in Syria. Um, you know, it, it is a strike first and foremost, is the striking position in addition to Ekatike, uh, if he does come in, something that we need to strengthen. It's been an argument in in uh, within the Newcastle fan base. And if he is, if you know anything about Jan Lucas Skamaka, is he the type of striker that we would look to purchase? Yeah, I think, like I said before, you probably do need to strengthen uh, that striker position in addition to Ekatika anyway, whether that's an out-and-out striker like Skamaka or more of an inside forward. Um, we'll wait and see. I think 16 goals in Serie A last season. He's a player at Newcastle like a lot, but six foot five, 23 years old, you're scoring goals um, fairly frequently in a top five uh, European league, you're going to be liked by a lot of clubs across Europe and fair to say he's got a lot of interest. But I think it's one where Newcastle, if they did want him, really want him, they'd just have to lay down the gauntlet and um, and really go after him. Because at the moment, I think it's just just sort of paper talk at the moment. The, the sort of initial interest is is only as, as far as it's gone so far. What type of striker, and look, this is aimed more towards Martin and Daz, what type of striker, if you were given the opportunity to sign a striker, in addition, forget Ekatike, put him to the side, it, we're talking as if he's a done deal, may not be, we don't know. But if you were looking for a striker to come in um, alongside or maybe in front of Callum Wilson, what type of striker, in terms of style of play or name, do you think we should be looking for to sign for Newcastle United? Mark, I'll start with you. Do you know what, Pete? That's a it's a really difficult question because off the top of my head, like who 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 is out there? I think of less, you know, the clubs seem to be going with the younger, the more younger player approach. Um I suppose I'm quite old fashioned in a way. I've always kind of liked the big man, little man scenario, four four two, quite old fashioned in style of play. Um I've I wish kind of things maybe had been a little bit better with maybe Wood and Wilson together. I'm not sure we've really given that an opportunity. Is is Wood going to get you your 20th season? No, he's not. Wood and working with Wilson get you more? I'm not convinced because we're not really seen enough. Um, if I probably, if, if I could have put a striker in there to play with somebody like Wilson, probably not at an age for it now, but somebody like a, a who's at Milan at the minute, Oliver Giroud, would have been a player I would have I, I would have loved to have seen at Newcastle or certainly in a black and white shirt um I think is a player that would get your goals um get you some absolute worldies consistent performer 
does well, good in the air, um, and he's got a top class barnet. So I think he's an absolute, <laughs> he's an absolute winner. He may, he puts Daz's hair to shame, and Daz has got a good barnet. To be fair, yes, yes. <laughs> you know. Thanks, so, yeah, somebody, somebody like Giroud. Um, I don't know, <laughs> you know, players like Skamaka and stuff. I think they're more. It's kind of like the Ekitiki. I think the club are building for the future. So I think we go for him. Yeah, you could throw him in. Would he would he thrive in the Premier League? First season, not so sure. Unless you're paying the massive money and you're getting somebody like a Diaz, like a Haaland, you know, these kind of players that are guaranteeing you 25 to 30 goals a season, you know, like a Nunes, who are who are, you know, those kind of players. Who else who else is out there? There's not really Oshiman, if I was gonna pick. I said it the other week. Um, Oshiman will probably be one of my faves at the moment. Um, I, I sent you on the clips during the week, Pete, from the Nigeria yeah. game. Four goals and two assists from. Um, so yeah, if I if I had to pick a player to throw in now, I would say Oshiman. Um, again, he's a he's a he's another Let, one of those players. It's a bit like Obafemi Martins, twenty two years old, but he looks like he's forty seven. Twenty three, actually. Hard so, to know if the passport's right or it's a bit of a stick on, but yeah, he he'd be look, me, me and you've spoken about him numerous times. Yeah. He's a class class act, real beast. I'd I would love him, but I think uh, if I wanted to match somebody to Wilson and I could throw in a striker from any kind of last few years, I think Giroud Giroud for me is a really really good player. Is that is that ten nil? Yeah, yeah that, that, that was in that was he his got, last he game. Got, yeah. Four well, goals and two assists. He was mental. Wow. He should have had more, yeah. in fairness. He hit the post twice as well. Let's wow. be honest. It, it was against Minnows. It, 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 <laughs> it, it was against the Minnows. But still, scoring four <clears throat> goals in a game cannot be kind of, um, you know. He's had, he had a good season. You can't season turn your head as well. away from that. But good look, 16 goals, 16 goal contributions, 14 goals, um, <coughs> two assists from 27 played. You look at the heat map. You look at... Um, Victor Ossiman, uh, in terms of where he creates the problems, um, you know, his passing is decent. Um, his defending is you know, minimal. Um, his dribbles are okay, but it, it, it's it, for me, it's about how dangerous he is in the box. If anyone watched Victor Ossiman, uh, if you haven't watched him, go and watch him when he when he came to the King Power Stadium and he played against Leicester City in in the Europa League. He tore them to shreds last season. His pace, his power, his ability in the air to hold up the ball. He has everything. And sometimes you look at stats like this on Sofa Score, it doesn't always show you the full picture of what we see when we watch a game and we watch a player like Victor Osimhen play. His stats are good. His stats are okay. You know, 16 goal contributions this season, not too bad. You know, but from a striker, you're not really interested in the defending side of things. You're not really interested in the in the passing or in, in in that case, the dribbling, unless they play off the left or the right. But what you would find from Victor Osimhen is that his overall gameplay is very similar to Callum Wilson. And um, as Martin said, he is he is a, a, a top, a top, top player. Um, but I'm going to go back to... Um, Gianluca um, Skamaka and he um, look he is a player that's got you know immense talent from a team that are not fighting at the top end of the league um, I'll take out the Nations League information and I'll put in his um, Serie A information 23 years old like you said um, he, he's a forward 16 goal contributions, um, no assists is what we can see. Um, but again, his passing details are good. His hold-up play is good. He is an absolute monster finisher. He really is a monster finisher. When he gets the ball in front of the goal, he knows how to put the ball away. Um, is there anything you want to talk about, Skamaka, from that point of view? Chris, I, I know you wanted me to put the stats up. Is there anything you wanted to mention on him before we, we kind of move on? Yeah, I mean, as I say, I, I, honestly, I was encouraged anyone to, um, you know, go out and do a bit of research on him. I mean, Dom said, you know, it's rumours and, you know, with it, until I suppose anything's concrete, then, you know, maybe don't get too excited about him. But as I say, the from what I saw of him, um, he certainly looked a player of interest and, you know, the 
even just his physical attributes, you know, when you mentioned Pete about his height and he's a good age and he's played in Serie A um, and what, 16 goals in 36 games? You know, and that that's in a that's for the Sassuolo team as well. Um, not not downplaying them whatsoever, but you know, if he, if he came to um, you know a thriving Newcastle side with you know mm. some fantastic new players that we're hoping to bring in, um, who knows? He he could absolutely thrive in the Premier League. But yeah. I, from what I saw, I certainly had no doubts that he would um, you know he would fit in well in the Premier League. Being honest, from what I saw. Definitely, he's um he's a player to look out for. Look, it does um whether it's Kamaka or somebody else, who do you think, you know, in your opinion, we should be looking at as a player yeah. to to come in striker wise? Yeah, um, yeah, I was pointed at Osman there when Martin was was describing the striker as well, and that's why um I put him on all the posters and then the and the the intro and everything like that. I think I think we we should be going all out to to bring him in now. Uh, uh, like when I know yourself and Rich, Pete, were we're talking about Nunes for the last over six months. Uh, but I recently did a, a in YouTube is a video Nunes versus Osman, and I actually thought thought uh, Osman was better. Uh, in in those little clips that that I was watching, uh, goals and stuff. But um, so yeah, I'd go all out for him to change, and that's 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 the position I, I think we we need to strengthen most. Above anywhere else, that's that's the position I, I want to to strengthen. So I'd be putting all my eggs in that basket. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe that's what they're doing. Maybe that's why they're trying to s- cut corners a bit on other signings and try and get the best deals and then go all out for them yeah. at, 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 later in the market. Yeah, definitely. Um, look, uh, at this point now, um, it, it's been a quieter week. Um, but we've we've discussed a lot of in, in, interesting um, discussions around you know defenders, around goalkeepers. We're looking hopefully for the, the the market to stop moving within the next week. So hopefully in the next week we'll have a lot more to talk about. But we'll end it there as a show. First and foremost, Dom, absolute pleasure for you to join us. Um, great opinions as well um, from your perspective from the Shields <laughs> Gazette. Um, you. Uh, you know. Anything you want to add in terms of where we can find you, um, your information before we leave? Yeah, just at Domska on Twitter, shieldsgazette.com, all my stories, and um, at Mouth of the Time Pod on uh, Twitter as well. You'll find all, all the stories from me, Miles, um, and the team over at the Shields Gazette. Um, so, yeah. Definitely. If you haven't watched Mouth of the Time podcast, it's a great podcast. Uh, always watch it. Um, or, or sorry, listen to it whenever, whenever it's on um, in the car on the way back from work or to work. Um, it, always a great listen. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure you check it out. And um, of course, before we leave, we cannot um, go without thanking the sponsors, Daz. Yeah, yeah. Just just a, a quick a quick run through. Uh, uh, shout out to the sponsors and just to let people know what's happening next week and the week after. Just just again to give you a heads up. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, so yeah, shout out to eighteen eighty one Brahman's uh, range uh, of clothing and of course uh, the black and white uh, army collection as well. And where you'll also find the loaded hat. Where the profits for that hat go to the food bank. So check that out. Also, shout out to shyburns.com. Simon was in the chat. As always, Simon was in the chat uh, earlier on. Could still be there. Uh, shout out to the range that Simon has uh, available. Check it all out. And yeah, we, as I mentioned before, something will drop in relation to, to, to Shy Burns uh, and, and with a link up to Loaded. So keep your eyes peeled pretty soon. Uh, also, shout out to Pins and Prints. And the range that they do, and you know what they do by now. You're sick of seeing our pictures going up, but check check out uh, what what the latest is from Dean at Pins and Prints. Also to Retro NUFC. Actually, did you see the um? What did he have on? Uh, was it bucket hat hats this hat afternoon? Bucket yeah, hats yeah, bucket hat. this afternoon. Yes, uh, Get yourself one amazing. of them for the summer. Yeah, should... I could see Pete rocking check, one check of them in Turkey with Lee now. We might have to see. Can we get a couple? Uh, you know what? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I've got it on, ready to place my order for one of those hats. So yeah, you can see the two boys rocking that, knocking back the chicken on the street in Marmara somewhere, can't you? Yeah, or, or, and you have to get an early for that as well. For me, for me, it, it, for, me doesn't drink, but for me, it's all about the the Turkish FS. Oh FSB. yes, Ooh, I hear you. It's lovely. Lovely. FSB is, is a tasty one. So yeah, look out for that bad boy with one of those bucket hats. No doubt. <laughs> uh, and then just to also let you know what's coming next week. So next 
Tuesday, 8 p.m., the 21st of June, uh, we've got the, the tune uh, review and, and the team, the full team are going to be uh, with us. So rocking up to us on Tuesday at 8 p.m. So there they are. You can see them a bit closer to the screen. They're coming out of the screen yet. Yeah, that's them there. So that's <laughs> where we put that up, uh, set that up for the Tuesday. And then uh people might have noticed sean's gone a bit quiet on on twitter uh he will be back on the twitter but he, he's actually on tour at the moment he will be rocking up with us on the 27th of june i think but here he is at the moment he's off off on the tour uh, on the bus uh are we there yet absolutely off to australia he goes for for the for the preseason games but yeah so that's coming up on the 27th to keep an eye for that so that's it back to you Pete. yeah Look, it's been a pleasure. Always good to talk Newcastle transfers. Remember, we always need to remember this, is that this time last year, we were we were looking at potentially only signing one player uh, in Joe Willock. Now we're looking at an array of players that we've discussed uh, tonight. And it's just an amazing feeling to talk about so many top talented European players potentially coming to Newcastle. Um, so... If all else fails, remember where we're at as a club. Stay positive. You know, good times ahead. A great season ahead with the fixtures that have just come out. And, you know, yeah. we roll yeah. on to next week, which we'll be moving on to episode four. So um, until then, uh, you guys all take care. Um, fingers crossed for more signings in the next week or so. And have a good evening. Take care, guys. Night, everyone. Hit that Take subscribe and like button. Good night. Yeah. Take it easy now. Oh. 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 Oh.